Hello everyone, and welcome to Straight Chilling. Each week we watch and review a horror film for your entertainment. You can send all questions and comments to straightchillingpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep chilling. Shall we straight chilling? Serial killing? Five cold fillers on the mic, got you reeling. Five star ratings from the floor to the ceiling. If you catch a one star, no time for feelings. Got a demon DJ all the ones and twos. By the name El Sabato, don't get confused. So grab a seat by the fire, roast them all over two. And prepare to hear the legend of the straight chilling crew. What up, nerds? And welcome to a very sunburnt episode of Straight Chilling. My name is Bob, and I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 251, recorded on Sunday, January 26, 2020. Tonight, we're talking about a Patreon pick. This one was chosen by our good friend, Jay Moore. The movie is going to be 2007's Sunshine. Before we get into it, let me introduce the crew. Calling in from Astoria, we got our boy Randy Gandy, G. Landy. Howdy. How's it going? It's going well. Very well. How are you? Uh-huh. How's your year been? Almost a month. <laughs> well, let's look back. What a <laughs> heck of a year it's been. Whole one month. Um, been great. Been seeing a lot of the Northwest. And that's my intro. Goodbye. Lottie, Lottie. <laughs> uh, also, well, actually, last, last, calling in from Southern Korea, we got our boy Soju. What's up, Soju? What up? It's your boy. Sci-fi stains today. We're talking hard sci-fi. We want it A little hard. on the nose there. How, how hard? How hard? I could have gone sunshine stains, but Sun- y'all have got on to me before just naming the, the movie as my name. So. <laughs> that would have been There's a lot of very It's getting funny, more rigorous. Though, like Sunshine <laughs> State. I don't know. It would make sense. You're from Florida. You should have gone with it. Okay. It would have been better. I have okay. stains of well, sunshine, also better. known as third degree burn. You guys are you guys are making me doubt myself. Yeah. God. We, we gotta do the whole intro <laughs> over again. Let's do the whole thing over again. <laughs> it's not working. Cool. Uh, but yeah, big thanks to uh, Jay Moore for supporting us on the Patreon and choosing a movie for us to review. Uh, like I said, we got kind of like a science fiction theme going this year already. There's, there's yeah, I'm actually, ex- yeah, I'm excited to talk about some sci-fi. I don't right? mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind being sci-fi stains this week. It's <laughs> been it's been a hot minute since we talked some hard sci-fi. <laughs> now, that's a stain you just can't get out. It's it's thick. It's a goop, a goopy stain. <laughs> it's, it's, it's made yeah. of microfabrics. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Uh, well, before we get into the review, let's tackle a little bit of housekeeping real quick. Uh, just a reminder, the February poll pick is posted on our Patreon website. If you support us at the $5 level or above, you get the chance to vote on a movie we're going to be talking about this February. Uh, the theme for which is going to be French horror movies, and the three movies up there are High Tension, Eyes Without a Face, and Raw. We only smash Raw. Eyes Without a Face taking it. Uh, Eyes Without a Face is not taking it. High <laughs> Tension. So far, doing pretty good. Still, still doing pretty good. It's looking good. Yeah. Switchblade roll. This is, this is a reminder to the straight chilling crew that this is the last week of January and we need to pick a new topic for next. <laughs> Thanks for the <laughs> reminder. Sure. On Thank air, <laughs> the sausage <laughs> is being made. Yeah. We're grinding the shit out of some meat and stuffing it into some intestines. Dude, <laughs> intestines. Oh my God. This went sausage. to a dark place quick. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it for the Patreon news, honestly. Justin, what do you got going on? I know you got some stuff. Dude, we got bracket of blood. Oh my god, we are heading in to the final eight. So this next round is going to decide who is going to take the divisions. So we had our That's four right. divisions. So in the killers division, going head to head, we've got Get Out versus Midsummer left. <sighs> Oh man, that's a, that's a tough choice. <laughs> In the monsters, we've got Train to Busan versus It Follows. Woo. Oh, I know you're uh, going to that one, Bobby. That's easy. That's easy. Ba- no, oh, yeah, ba- it is, but not oh, the way you ba- think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, the Haunters, The Conjuring versus The Veach. Oh, shit. Jeez. And yeah. 
And finally, in Macabre, Hereditary versus Mandy. That one's easy for me, but I know. That one's a little tougher. Than I, I the think it's easy for me, but in a wrong way for in most people. <laughs> so if you're listening, you're just tuning in for the first time here. We have way. been whittling down the greatest horror movies that were released over the past decade. We're trying to find out what the best movie is. And um, this is sort of like best horror movie from last from decade, the, last the greatest decade. decade of horror, the possibly, greatest possibly. There can be Probably. only one. There can be only one. <laughs> These are all fucking heavy hitters, man. It's going to be tough. Yeah, tough to pick. We have whittled it down from 128 films. These yeah. are the eight that are left, and this will um, that'll leave us with the final four, and then we'll have a final two. And then we'll have a final one. And then we're doing it again. We're doing it again. <laughs> we <laughs> recount, the trial run will be complete. We got to recount now. <laughs> then we are finished. Then we know who is. Then we may never do it again. Who is number one? <laughs> Who's the king of last decade? Where can people Ooh, man, vote? The, Where can they vote? Uh, on our website, straightchillingpodcast.com. We also have several links on all of our socials. So you can find a link on our Instagram on our Facebook and on our Twitter pages. Um, so we have made it easy for you. And we also will be posting reminders for the individual matchups on all those socials as well. You will have until Friday, this upcoming Friday, which is the 31st, 11.30 p.m. to vote. You can cast one vote per poll. So you get a total of four uh, votes this week. And yeah, help us decide the division winner. So, who's the best killer movie? Who's the best haunter? The best monster? And the best and the best macabre film? And I can't believe we're movies, down to the final A, guys. I know, oh, man. Those that first round of movies—they're not even allowed to be shown anymore because our bracket is so legit. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody takes them seriously anymore. As hard, yeah, you can't. <laughs> I know, man. They're done. They're Be- forgotten. Get your votes in. <laughs> Haunt the vote. You got to do it. Haunt the vote. Also, we got some gaming situations going on. I was twitching last night. Oh, my last night. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get my Twitch on. The tweet. So if you like horror video games, you can watch me play through some horror video games every month. Right now, I'm playing Alien Isolation. It was dope. I ran into some cyborgs. So... Uh, and it's based off the movie Alien, Cyborg. and y- and you know you've got like oh, some yeah, robots, right. yeah, mm-hmm. um, and Alien. But there's this company. I like the way they did it. So um, in the game, there's this different company that makes like a different form of cyborgs, and their whole thing is they're like kind of cheap. But their thing is like, ah, oh, they don't need to look good. Like they just need to be of service, like to you. And so they're really disturbing looking because they don't try to make them look <laughs> human. But it just makes it like scare. Like they put just like really plain faces on them that don't have like emotion or whatever. Cool. But it makes them terrifying, <laughs> which would like be re- like real life yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I like so, it. Just um, like real it, life. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of adds like even it. more. Not only do you have to like run from like space bandits and like the alien, but now I've got these creepy ass cyborgs running around too. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Um, so I'm enjoying that game. You can watch live at twitch.tv forward slash straight chilling podcast. The streams stay up for uh, two weeks per episode. And then I've been highlighting when I get uh, the shit scared out of me as well. So if you enjoy those, those will be the most important. Those will be, bits, ava- really. <laughs> those will be available as well. Um, and new video game review up on our YouTube page. Um, if you've ever played dead by daylight or interested in playing dead by daylight, I have a new full review at youtube.com forward slash straight chilling podcast. And that is all the horror gaming that we have. Nice. That's Ta-da. a lot of shit. That's a lot of shit. Ta-da. Um, do you have anything else, Juice? Is that it? For you? I don't think so. Bobby, you did a mini episode this past week. Did you want to talk about it at all? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just a reminder, mini, mini episode. Uh, we did a, a mini, a, mini episode. This the smallest, the tiniest episode. <laughs> you're ever we did an episode. To. End of episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was talking about villains, uh, which is sort of like this bizarre. Horror comedy, I guess you could call it. Uh, it, ca- it, ca- it came out last year. It, I think it just went straight to VOD, though. But it's got uh, Micah Monroe and uh, Bill Skarsgård in it. And um, they're they're sort of on the run, uh, trying to make it to Florida, robbing convenience stores. 
um, doing what they can to get by and their car breaks down and they're kind of in the middle of nowhere and they break into a house with the intention to steal a, uh, a car out of the garage to haul some ass and the homeowners come home and catch them and they may or may not have a small child locked up in the basement and there's some weird shit that goes down from there. Uh, okay. It's pretty the whole uh, back of the box there for us, but there you go. It's pretty <laughs> solid. And, uh, I rented it on Amazon, so it's, uh, pretty accessible for you to watch. I recommend it and uh, definitely check out our mini cast. It's up and ready. I think willing. they just did. Yeah. They <laughs> <laughs> No, they did. There's so much more. I mean, it's a little bit bigger than that. It's mini, but it's bigger than that. Okay, good. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. I think we did it. I think the house is kept. I think this oh, house okay. has been kept. It's been kept. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what we've been watching this week. Hey gang, what you been watching? Randy, what you been watching? You know, I have not actually watched a whole lot this week. Um, I caught up on Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I did that. And I watched uh, the first episode of that new Vic Burger show. Are you guys familiar with this? No. No, um, I th- or it's a pilot. I don't know if it's actually produced or what, but it seems like um, you guys know who Vic Berger is. He makes these like insane YouTube videos. No, um, no. or he just like it's I'm like everything is terrible it. level shit. Um, where it's just like cuts of like usually prominent figures, usually political figures, just like cutting them up in such a way that's really bizarre and hilarious. And he has a show where <laughs> he goes and interviews people. He's going in this episode. He went to interview steel workers in Beth- Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where they used to make all the steel, but there are none left basically. So he's just going around to like Starbucks and shit and asking people where steel workers are. And then like <laughs> making insane cuts with people talking to him. It's really what? strange. It's really strange. And I do recommend it. Vic. Burger. Right. I love that name. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's a real guy. And dude, he looks like Beekman a little bit. He's got a little bit Beekman hairdo. Huh. Beekman's world. Strange. Huh. <laughs> can can I be anyway. referred to as Bob Burger from here on out? No. Um, no, that's copywritten by Fox Entertainment. You can't give yourself your own nickname, Bob. <laughs> Damn, isn't that the truth? T-Bone. <laughs> I'm just a T-Bone kind of guy. <laughs> T-Bone <laughs> real, Bob. Real T-bone stands Randy. of power move there, Bob. <laughs> T-Bone Bob. <laughs> yeah, all right, whatever. Uh, anything else? <laughs> <All right. laughs> that's that's it for me. Cool, short and sweet. Juice, what you been watching? Uh, I watched a Korean horror film uh, by the name of A Tale of Two Sisters. Oh, cool! It was an option one. on yeah on our um, poll pick uh, when we did Korean movies a while back, and um, so. I watched it. I enjoyed it. It's like a little older now. It's like from 2003, I think, or something like that. But yeah. it was solid. It held up well. I really enjoyed it. Um, I also watched um, Don't that Don't Fuck With Cats because you guys kept talking about it. <laughs> um, yeah. Fucking that shit. Oh, man. That shit was pissing me off. But <laughs> 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 fucking goddamn. Uh, uh, yeah, that was really interesting. Um, it was really good. It's because I watched the Aaron. So Netflix does these like little like true crime docu series or whatever, and I'd watched the Aaron Hernandez one like the week before, and oh, really? then I'd watch this one like the week after, and they're like so different in the way that they're kind of like played out that it was cool to like have them almost kind of back to back and just see like how different these true crimes can like kind of be. I guess. Um, hmm. But, uh, yeah, so I watched that and that was super interesting. And I started watching that Sabrina, um, they're on season, season three. three now. Yeah. They're on season three. And That's hard so to believe, huh? I know, well, yeah, because the first one came out last, uh, Halloween or Halloween, I guess, 2018. So they don't even wait a year to no. kind of drop these. Yes. Crank them out, man. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, it seems like if nothing else consistent, like pretty consistent, like tone wise and everything with if what they put else, out. You're before. not a big fan, right? <laughs> well, it's just, it's not, it's like not my style. I actually think it's done well because it like, yeah, every time I see it, it's like got this like really 
comic booky like Halloween vibe. It's the main thing for me. It's it's very like teeny boppy. Like everyone looks like Gord. Like all the dudes who stroll up in there, just like ripped <laughs> and never wearing their shirts. And Unrealistic like, body very, image. It's very like teeny boppy. So, um, but for what it is, it actually like they do a pretty good job with it. But so I'm going through that, and I think that's about all I've been watching. Cool. Uh, I watched a few movies this week. Uh, I I watched another Cronenberg Blade. movie. Blade, you wish. You wish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the people are clamoring for it. He's just uh-huh. doing it out of spite now. Oh, yeah. I'll never see Who's it. the troll now, baby? Oh, <laughs> not me. So I watched Dead Ringers. <laughs> Dead Ringers from 1988. It's a Cronen- Cronenberg. Cronenberger film. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's okay. It's sort of like a middle of the road Cronen- <laughs> Cronenberg movie. <laughs> It's, uh, was it worth that thirty dollar steel book, Bob? Oh yeah, would you say I paid eight thousand dollars for the yeah. slip cover? Oh man, alone. could have had a whole army. Mm-hmm. I know, army it's, of ski doos. It's <laughs> ski to- <dudes>. totally <laughs> ski. That's yeah, funnier than it should be. So, uh, so this movie, <laughs> this movie is about uh, uh, twin gynecologists. They're like identical twins. Uh, they're played yeah, by Jer- Jeremy Irons. Tale as old as time. <laughs> Tale as old as time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they're uh, they're definitely cooter status. Um, so they're mm. uh, they're like awesome in their field. They're like cutting edge and developing new technology and whatnot. Uh, but they sort of take advantage of their clients. Uh, one of them's like a really smooth talker, and he he like you know manipulates his clients into having some sex with him or whatever. And this one like famous actress yeah. comes in, he does the same thing, and then have he's some sex with me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just some, like, just lo- some. Sometimes you just gotta ask, you know. Just, you know, would you will like, you have some sex would with you like me? To have some sex. With me? We don't have to have all of it, just some of it. Look, just, just I have a little extra that. sex lying around. Let's use it up. <laughs> this, this actress comes in and they bang it out and then uh that one of the twins is like hey this this actress came in you gotta you should go in there and pretend to be me because we look the same you know and, and then you know have some <laughs> sex with her too and then he does and they're like really really <laughs> fucked up that's <laughs> really dark and, and then it is it is it despite is really my dark. laughter <laughs> And then she starts like asking him for for pills because I guess she's like addicted to pills and they give her these pills and then they just start taking all these pills and like spiraling out of control and like hallucinating and doing wild shit. Um, what the fuck? Yeah, it's like it's light on the body horror. There's a little bit, but not as much as you might expect from a Cronenberg movie in the 80s. It's like it it, it runs long. It's like two hours long. It gets a little uh, boring in the middle. I don't. It's I would give it like a like a like a solid. I don't know, two and a half. It's like, okay. This isn't a mini cast, Bob. Yeah, what the fuck? It's not, oh, God damn it. (laughs) You can't be handing out, you can't, People are getting the sex for free right now. I retract my, s- oh. my previous statement. <laughs> Strike it from the record. Let's move on. It's stricken. I also watched a movie called Dark Water, um, which is from 2005. It's a Japanese uh, production. And uh, so it's put out by um, Arrow Video. I picked it up. Um, they, they'll On occasion, they'll put out like some really, really great Japanese horror movies. Um, this is one that I'd never seen before. Um, it's basically about, uh, a single mom and her, her daughter, um, uh, moving into a new apartment out on their own for the first time. Uh, the little girl's parents were just divorced and they're sort of uh, in a custody battle. Um, and they move into this apartment that's like haunted by this uh, little girl ghost, very much like the ring. If you think of like the ghosty girl in the ring, it looks very similar, yeah. similar to that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, they move into this apartment and they see spooky things and um, it's it's just haunted. I don't really want to say much more than that. Uh, it's kind of like a slow burn, but the way it's it's like photographed, it's like very very pretty. It's like beautiful to look at. And there's this one scene towards the end that literally I screamed out loud like a child. Like it scared the <laughs> fuck out of me. It's which is hard to do because we watch fucking horror movies all the time. But it's I screamed like a little girl. Um, Welcome to my world, Bob. It's just twitch <laughs> every night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God. Um, yeah, I recommend it. It's pretty cool, especially if you're into J horror. Um, it's uh, solid, solid picture. Dark water from 2005. Um, but that's what I've been watching. 
let's go ahead and move into the main event. Uh, we're talking oh, yeah. about Sunshine from 2007. Let's start off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? What is on the back of the box? Answer so, the question. This <laughs> this movie is directed by <clears throat> Danny Boyle, written by Alex Garland, which we, mm-hmm. know, we know all about him. Um, it also stars uh, Cillian Murphy, Rose Byrne, Chris Evans, and a bunch of other folks. Uh, the synopsis is as follows. A team of international astronauts are sent on a dangerous mis- mission to reignite the dying sun with a nuclear fission bomb in the year 2057. Uh, have you guys seen this movie before, and would you recommend it? Randy? I have, in fact, seen this movie before. It's been some time. Maybe not since maybe like a year or two after it came out, I saw it. Um, it was pretty far back. And yeah, I would definitely totally recommend this movie. Um, if you like sci-fi for sure. And I mean, it, it toes the line, sci-fi horror line pretty damn well, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So yeah, recommend. Sweet. Juice, what about you? Yeah, I'd seen this movie before. It hasn't been that long for me. Maybe like four or five years. Um, but I really enjoyed it. The first time I watched it, I really enjoyed rewatching it again. And it is like, it's almost a little, it's not something I see like discussed a lot. It's almost like this kind of hidden gem for sci-fi horror, but it pulls it off like really well. Um, great space horror movie. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with you guys, man. It's like, it, it seems like it should get more praise than it does. I think it's just kind of underseen. Yeah. Um, but, Which uh, is weird because the cast is yeah, like pretty big. It's a Danny Boyle all our cast. Yeah, big right, cast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The director, the cast. It's kind of. I I can't really explain why it's underseen. Maybe I don't know if it got yeah. a theatrical release at all. Maybe it did. Maybe because Cillian Murphy's haircut like, just didn't g- age that well. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. No, that can't be it. Because <laughs> even like I think it's got like an appeal to even like a wider audience who isn't yeah. maybe as big into horror. Like sure. I think it could still like appeal like to the masses. Yeah, I, yeah. It's weird that it's so underseen. And I went about. just specifically to find what people th- like. I, this is the kind of movie you would expect to see like a dozen like th- think pieces on YouTube by every you know Tom, Dick, and Harry in the office trying to yeah. make a fucking. Uh, video essay is going to talk about but there are like almost none and it, it really surprised me i wanted to go check out what people thought of it mm-hmm. there's some other shit going on but huh. it's pretty under under discussed even on it yeah even amongst like you know niche communities <laughs> i don't know why yeah. that is well let's take one step in the right direction to correct that we're talking about sunshine Let's preach it. Let's help spread the good word. I uh, mean, we represent the horror community now. So, I do. mean, this all is all you need. And Cillian Murphy has only paid two of us. So, <laughs> legally, <laughs> guess which one? Right. <laughs> guess which one? His hair looks great. I won't and hear one of anything us, else. And one of us got a sea do. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the deal. <laughs> a ski do, I believe. Ski do, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like we. Uh, we we all recommend it. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's worth your time, especially if you're into uh, science fiction, horror movies, horror in space. Check it out. Um, if you like hard sci-fi, then you need to watch this. <laughs> you really, you're fixated on the hard aspect of <laughs> sci-fi. Hard with I like, th- I like that there's sci-fi. a distinguish, like I like that there's a line that people just distinguish with hard yeah. sci-fi. I prefer <laughs> soft sci-fi. Personally, yeah, that's my. I'm brand. more of a soft sci-fi guy I'm a, myself. I'm a f- the- flaccid sci-fi guy. <laughs> you know what's your what's your what's your sci-fi sleep number? My, mine's about a one. <laughs> I like it hard. Uh, I'm a Q-che sci-fi firm prefer. Oh yeah, that's, that's okay. This only, bit's gone on only a quarter of sci-fi. <laughs> quarter sci-fi. Yeah, let's go ahead and drop that. Thirty spoiler. minutes of our fucking podcast is going to be us riffing on that one joke. <laughs> yeah. uh, dropping that spoiler warning. Here we go. Spoiler warning. All right. We're talking sunshine. So this movie kicks off with sun. It's like a massive info dump, just letting you know where the hell you are. It's kind of like doing what Star Wars does, but without the scroll, it just talks at you for a second. 
Um, yeah. So the sun is yeah, it's dying. Just a scarecrow talking. Just a scarecrow talk. The the <laughs> sun is dying. Mankind is facing extinction. Um, and uh, seven years prior to where we are currently in the story, um, their Icarus One mission was sent to the sun uh, to f- launch a huge bomb into it to reignite the sun. Um, but it didn't work. We're not totally sure why. Nobody heard from the crew. Um, so they sent a new ship, Icarus two with the same mission, to launch a huge bomb into the sun to reignite it. And we're following that crew. That's the, this movie is the story of that crew. Um, so there's eight people on the ship and, uh, they're flying directly towards the sun and the bomb is in front of the ship and it's the size of Manhattan Island. It's fucking huge. So that's kind of. And reflective. Where we start. And reflective, yeah. Yeah, they just got this big-ass shield that, like, blocks them from the sun. That was pretty dope. Yeah. Because yep. I like in the opening scene, they use that to make it, like, this eye. So it's, mm-hmm. like, it almost looks like an iris or whatever yeah. what, because it's just <laughs> yeah. this huge circle shield that goes. Yeah. And just, it kind of sets up one of, like, my main, like, one of the big positives for me about this film is like just the space visuals that they use. So even yeah. starting off with that, like, Oh, like that, the way it looked like an eye going into the sun or whatever was yeah, really shots. cool. Cause they do a lot of cool, su- like space and sun and just a lot, like a, a lot of cool visuals. They do a lot with like, it's, it's really only a couple of like things that you can put on screen when you're in the space. Like it's just the ship and the sun and then a couple of odd things that show up here and there. Otherwise yeah. that's all you got to look at is like that and people's faces, but they really take their time showing you the outside yeah. of the ship. Yeah. Which I it, appreciate that. It feels like I, I'm no scientist, of course, but it feels, whoa, 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 whoa. Bob. It feels like all the <laughs> shit that they kind of explain to you as this is progressing, it feels like halfway believable, at least. You know, yeah. they have like uh, yeah. this little ecosystem on board that produces oxygen for them. They have like these, mm-hmm. you know, lush. All your basic and- questions are covered for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah they-, they like recycle water. Um, that yeah, they have the plants on board that they eat, and then also gives them oxygen. Gravity is the um, only thing I think they don't explain in it, but yeah, yeah, they have a doctor. Like I mean, like yeah. everybody, like there's like seven or eight crew members. There's like a communications guy, a biologist who takes care of like the garden, a captain, a doctor, a captain, a maintenance guy, and the guy who's like the bomb specialist who like designed the bomb. He's like and, a and, yeah, like a. Ge- geologist or something yeah it's like something then, that doesn't like, quite another fit another woman who i can't remember <laughs> <laughs> why like i she's, can't remember what her special like what she is like I think she specialist. pilots the ship like she's the one that is she the pilot okay. yeah, steering it as far as i understand it all right um anyway but yes they, they do yeah. it's this i mean this is an alex garland writing expedition here so he's got those kind of bases covered and this is the first movie i saw of his that i can recall off the top of my head, but like they all kind of share this like believability in the sci-fi that it's doing up to a point, obviously, but like they really like establishes what needs to be established and gets those questions right the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty (laughs) tight. It's, um, it's tighter than annihilation was to go ahead and compare and contrast off the bat. Cause we got to do that. What? Yeah. Didn't he also write annihilation? Yeah, he did. Okay, okay, just make sure. Oh, I okay. I was wondering why you were making the comparison. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, this same writer. Like, that was his work too, and, and Ex Machina too. Ex Machina, but that's yeah. sort of like slow, but the but the the fact of the situation, sort of like the the groundwork is laid really really quickly. Yeah. And really yeah. beautifully in this case. Um, yeah, uh, and not uh, only that, I feel like the science like is explained really well, but I feel like they do a really good job quickly establishing these characters mm-hmm. as believable and distinct. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. they're they're distinct in their profession and their like s- like specialties, but also like he does a pretty good job of establishing oh, we forgot Trey. Trey is the, like the he's the um physicist maybe. Right something he's he's another character but they establish everybody with their own kind of like distinct like personalities too and they kind of go through these different situations mm-hmm. so like our main ones are uh captain america uh yeah. mace and kappa and they kind of like have like a, a real like tension between them well that starts um, immediately with like th- this movie starts on them getting pissed at each other because they should say right off the bat, okay, we're about to go to a point in the sun's atmosphere where we won't be able to communicate with Earth anymore. So say yeah. your goodbyes, send your video files, and that'll be that. 
And so Kappa goes in there, Celia Murphy's character Kappa goes in there and like takes too long, which pisses off Captain America, something fierce. Which, by the way, yeah. this is the movie uh, when that made me be like, yes, great idea when they cast him as Captain America because he's great in this. Yeah, um, he's a huge prick in this yeah. movie. He's a he's a bit of a prick, dude. I was all I a was all team Mace the whole way. Of like I don't know, man. Were. Dude, he was he okay. He was like a very forward dick, but everything he said, like yeah, that dude took too long. That's a dick yeah. move. Like yeah. be respectful yeah. of like no, the I, people around you. And I like actually, the thing about Cap is Cap is always like. He's like this, like pitiful, like kind of sorry, like oh, I mean, okay, I'm sorry that I took too long. But it's like you son of a bitch, like yeah. I can't send my message Kappa now. Listens Fuck to a lot you. of dashboard confessional, if I had to guess. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he I, always plays that like sad boy, like take pity on me. Sorry, well, you know but it's why like, that is, and that there's a there's like a story reason for that, but I don't think it's covered all that well. Okay. Oh, really? Um, no. It was it was listed among the trivia, but I'll go ahead and like like loosely outline it now. Is that he's considered even among the crew as an outsider because he's not an astronaut. He never did had okay. anything to do with astronaut. He's only there because of the specific he made the like, bomb, knowledge yeah. of that bomb. Yeah. And so he's a man out of out of place already and he's like on a death spiral mission or whatever. So yeah. like a, a but not completely mission. because they established pretty early that that woman who I couldn't remember, I guess the pilot, that she like simp like she's like their confidants like she talks. Right. I don't know and if they're like dating support- or whatever but like she supports him and yeah, he, they have support system, but like, yes, but he, that that's just but where yeah, he's coming from. Yeah. Like, and I don't like, I think both characters are written well enough to where like, yeah, I see kind of both their sides. Like, Oh fuck. I, I fucked up. Yeah. Like who hasn't made that kind of dumb ass, not yeah. that big, but Captain that America kind of dumb ass like, mistake before. Roy raged out about fucking yeah. everything though. And like, I he's think that, like, yeah. that's, that's the first impression we get of him, but you get to see like a good, I, I think he shows a pretty like, strong dedication he's just so dedicated to the mission yeah like that's, yeah yeah that's his defining and, and he's always like um very like he he doesn't i guess he doesn't try to like be polite about it it's the yeah. main he's not like a people person he's just like no we need to like stick to the mission or no you need to stop like take it so long like he's just well, very forward I relate. Yeah, but like, relate. In the, okay. but like, that's the one time where he was not mission focused, which is why he like went from this like having long hair and a beard or whatever, and having yeah. this like heart to heart with the the captain, and then he kind of turns it around. But he still resents the fuck out of Kappa, of course. But he's trying yeah. to like, he's trying to like, he's not a bad guy. Is what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't think anything he did was like too too bad, except for like swinging the first punch. You know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So the, the, there was um. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say the sort of the first big thing that we come to after that, um, they they come across a distress signal that was sent out from the Icarus One ship because they're yeah. coming close yeah. to where they lost contact with that ship. Um, so they find the distress signal and they're thinking like, well, shit. Um, there's actually a slight chance that maybe somebody is still alive on that ship. Yeah, um, yeah. Assuming this that moral some, quandary was seen was amazing. Yeah, uh, they're like assuming if if like you know half the crew had died on the way to the sun, there would be enough oxygen to support like a couple people or something like that. Still, so they're like, now should we go out of our way to see, or should we just keep on track for the mission? And they're sort of bickering back and forth about that. And then eventually, um, it comes down to old Silly and Murphy. They're like, you know. Uh, we, we're going to let you sort <laughs> no, of, well, the captain makes that decision, which I yeah. think is like, especially knowing he's not like an astronaut like them. Now he's a scientist, sure. yeah. but the captain's like they're at first they're like, we'll vote on it. He's like, no, this isn't a democracy. We're all scientists. And he's like the only one like who yeah, knows about that. this bomb mm-hmm. is, is Kappa or whatever. So he's going to make the decision, which well, he only like okay. He knows about the he knows about the bomb, but he doesn't know all the fine details about rerouting the ship, and right. like <laughs> he doesn't have to well, do all that his, shit. So that the only I don't question like. that was on the only question that was on his shoulders was: do, Is another having another bomb better than going in and having one shot at yeah. it? Like that was the yeah. only question he ended up weighing, and like I that is the guy you would ask that question. Yeah. Like, it, like, do we need the second bite at the apple or? Yeah. Is that a fruitless endeavor for us? Like the science and then that decision just sort of informed all the other decision. Yes. Like everything else, like it sounds like from the captain's perspective, he feels like it can be done. Like he has some like some reason to think that it can be done. They all none of them think yeah. that they can't go there. So he, the question like really comes down to that one issue. So I don't really mm-hmm. fault him for it. Kind of seems like putting him on the spot or whatever it is, but it's he's not answering the question of like 
Yeah. Do you want to go back? He's answering the question, is it smart to go back? Is yeah, is it like more beneficial? Which right. like and that's an and that's where the second rift happens is like Captain America is like, mm-hmm. no, like this is like a science mission that's been planned for seven years. Literally the computer yeah. is designed to take us there, like all this shit. And like you guys want to like bring human element uh, like element into it, like reroute the ship without and they don't have communication, so they can't like talk back to Earth and be like, Does this look sound? Like, does this look safe? And so he's like, no, like stick with the mission. But of course, Kappa decides to like go pick up the second bomb. And that's yeah. where shit Which, starts to, going back. To give him a little I, bit of credit, though, they do mention like they've used up s- like all the Earth's remaining resources to create the first bomb, which right. failed, and then they made this last bomb, and that is the last shot they got. So if they got yeah. their shot, this one off, and it didn't work, they'd be fucked. But if they had a second one, you know, maybe it would work. I don't know. So there's like some logic. Yeah, if they need it. double the megaton that they yeah. thought or something, I yeah. mean, who knows? So I mean, there's that's that's what's beautiful about Alex Garland's sci-fi writing is yeah. that he always gives you like the both sides of a moral quandary and expects you to like just sit with whatever decisions made like there is no yeah. right answer nope, to that yeah. question no easy answer for sure <laughs> yeah there's nuance to it yeah it's it's like really intriguing like what the fuck would it you makes do you in that like yeah know. you're that that's what's like great sci-fi Teammates, does is like it, beat really, ass. Like, Sorry. it gives you an opportunity <laughs> it draws you into the characters first is little with a little bit but then they give you those quandaries to make you identify with one position or the other and then mm. like you're so worried about discovering your own feelings about it that you're not even like you can't see the strings anymore at a yeah. certain point you're really sucked yeah in. yeah so that that decision leads to like another like issue so like they they choose to go out of their way to try and get that second bomb and see if there's anybody alive on the ship and in order to do that to do that they have to like reroute the uh the giant shield because they're changing angles and they're like they have to protect themselves from the sun with this giant shield um but the guy who's rerouting the ship forgot to do that and they take on a little bit of damage um so two people have to like go outside of the ship in moon suits to inspect <laughs> the damage and see how bad it is those moon suits I love. So, yeah they yeah. Do, they do a good job first of all of just like stressing one of like the horrors of just space survival space because horse. like that was life yeah, force. This, we the talked space about horse. that last week <laughs> <laughs> but the first thing that happens like okay like they reroute the ship and um and they get like some damage, but like they immediately bring up like, well, we're all not dead. Like, because that like easily could have happened. Like they yeah. could have burned a hole like through our hole and like, we could all just be dead yeah. immediately. So like just that, like, Oh, you forgot to reset the shields. Like one, he says like, I forgot to reset like one degree or something. It's and it's like, huge you could have all just yeah. exploded immediately <laughs> and like talk. And that's why like Chris, like it stresses that idea of like Chris Evans being like, no, like, like the smallest thing when you're like flying through fucking space with a giant bomb is like any one tiny minute thing could go wrong. And then that's the last chance. Start. It's not like somebody can like, Oh, like, you know, let's go fly yeah. out and pick up this bomb since you exploded your ship. It's like, no, that's like, that's humanity right there. Cause one dude forgot to reset the shield one fucking percent. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's 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 an interesting situation to watch yourself in. So at this point, like two people have to go out, and Captain America like straight up volunteers Cillian Murphy. He's like he's like you're fucking going. <laughs> and and to yeah. give him credit, Cap is like yeah I'm going. He suits up, no yeah. problem. Yeah yeah he steps up. Yeah and he so, doesn't volunteer himself. No he no. because I think the captain said like somebody else got to like the, volunteer. Yeah the captain. Well and, yeah that was and Cap would go he, out. Nobody really got yeah. to state a position because Captain America which, comes in and says, you're yeah. getting the fuck out of here. Yeah. Which um, actually, those are kind of like the two worst choices because the captain. Right. And the dude <laughs> and that knows the bomb. The dude who knows well, the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, those are true. kind of so, like, like important it's, people you need. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Like, that's that's like, <laughs> that is kind of an oversight on their part. They're so just like interested in like. Later on, they they go through the process of saying like, "Well, who's most important to survive?" Yeah, but yeah in that yeah. moment, they don't. Which and they, yeah, that's well, and seems also like an too, they have to sedate the guy, the physicist Trey, who like fucked up because now he's like losing his suicidal shit. as fuck. Yeah. yeah, he's like not taking his fuck up well. And even when it first happens, he doesn't take it well. Where he like he like claims responsibility for it, but mm-hmm. he does not take it well. But uh, so another great scene they do like 
when they have to go out to fix it is you see the big shield and they have to like move it to shield because they have to fix the, like panels in the shield I guess like on the shield and, yeah yeah on the shield and so they have to move it to shade like the two guys who are going out there and it's just so massive like when they're going out there and also like the people in the ship like hear the bending metal yeah. of it of like and the, the expansion key, and it's just like <laughs> sounds like so terrifying i think they do like a fantastic job of capturing like the true like claustrophobic and like mm-hmm. loneliness and like all of this of well, the space. desperation of all that yeah yeah just sure. like how easily like you can fuck up and like and, being like stuck in the space suit and not but like she's like you need to stop like breathing so much oxygen and like just like the simplest little things or you're dead yeah, <laughs> it's like nothing, oh my god nothing makes you uh more relaxed than somebody telling you hey relax you're freaking <laughs> yeah, out. Okay. uh you're breathing through oh, all you your oxygen what? you're right i should relax <laughs> i should do that yeah. i'm out here <laughs> in space yeah <laughs> they, they do uh, a great job with all that <laughs> they end up repairing the shield and silly and wholesome ass and makes it to safety but the captain gets fried crispy is a well is a the reason that, that happens character. is another quick fuck up they're like oh we can fix this so we just need to move the shield so they move the shield but that causes like a reflection they didn't think about on the comms tower or no they think like no, oh no. it's going to destroy the comms towers and they're they like, know oh, we that and they're it. like well we can't communicate anyways but then when it destroys the comms towers that it like causes a reflection that then burns their whole damn garden to the ground yeah Literally. they burn their fucking o- o2 their food and supply. oxygen is then now like completely burn up while two people are out there trying to fix the panel so they're like oh my god we got to move it back like now or we're going to like lose all of our oxygen and like never make it to even like set yeah. the bomb off so they have to move the shield, but they're not done fixing it yet. And they're like, well, if we don't fix the shield, we're all going to die. So the captain's like, well, I'll just stay here and die or whatever. And like, <laughs> I guess I'll stay here and die. That's it. Tappa, like you get your ass back. Yeah. Another thing we didn't really touch on that they bring into this scene is the doctor, which yeah. the they really needed guy. to, the captain needed to address this shit. Yeah. The psychologist yeah. <laughs> slash doctor guy is like, they have this room where they can go look at the sun, like through, yeah. um, like a through tent. like a, a, a lens a viewing or, room or, yeah, or whatever. Tent. An observation but they can room change the tent or whatever. <clears throat> and one of the things that I love about this movie is that dude is obsessed with it. So he like goes through this whole like monologue about how like if you're in a like darkness, it's like a vacuum, like you like, um, I don't like it absorb or no, but like in light, it's like complete whiteness and it absorbs you or whatever. And so throughout the movie, he is so obsessed with just like looking at the sun with more and more intensity that like his skin, like it's burning his like a sunburn and the like, Mm -hmm. and he starts to like peel and like, just, he has to wear sunglasses around his eyes and you can see just like the, the color change and stuff. It's like, but also he's kind of going insane. And so when the, <laughs> when yeah. the uh, captain is facing like imminent death and the sun is about to completely like burn him up, he's just like talking to him on the comms. He's like, captain, what do you see? Like, tell me what you see. He's like so me. obsessed with it that he's yeah. like, I'm yeah. not worried he's, about this guy he dying. He's like, tell me pretty- like what you see or whatever. <clears throat> it's like, dude, like that would be the same as like some guy like, talking to somebody about to get exploded by like a nuclear bomb or some shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, what, what do you see? see? Yeah. Uh, it's a fucking huge white light. That's about to burn me. Yeah, up. It's well, fucking bright. That would be hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, something's coming at the speed of light to crispy. <laughs> my ass. Yeah. It's really cool and calming, um, but he doesn't, he never know, gets like, he seems like an obvious choice for like a, a, a Chris Evans freak out or somebody to freak out on him. But yeah, nobody ever really does. does for him. And then, and like the reason that he never even really gets the chance to fuck up like so directly that he gets like, you know, his ass whooped for it because they then go to the, the Icarus one and they board yeah. that find a bunch of crispy fried uh, passengers in the observation room where they had like burnt themselves alive basically. Yeah. Um, and, uh, in order to get something like goes wrong with the airlock and it explodes and they're like free floating away and they have to like make this daring escape or whatever. But one guy has to stay behind. That's the doctor. The doctor volunteers yeah. to stay behind and then like goes into the observation room and takes in the full force of the sun. So yeah, just for like all his people. like craziness, <laughs> he did sacrifice himself at the end for the, 
for the lives of the other guys. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just, I guess it's like weird to me too. Cause he goes into that spaceship and like, it's all dust and he sees that they burn themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, it's just, you're just burning yourself alive. <laughs> like, I don't like, <laughs> He does like a pretty good job of it, like explaining it so it's convincing. But still, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, look, these people just burn to a crisp. Like, it's just like hot, hot heat. Like, yeah. well, he's like the band. Band. Like, It's God. It's like he's, 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 he's yeah. like worshiping it. He's totally obsessed yeah, and consumed is. with it. Yeah. It's this all powerful being. And that's definitely Absolutely. something that, like, that that's like a point the movie's trying to make right like when the sun dies we all die like we fully yeah. depend on this like huge ball of fire in the sun and mm-hmm. like it's it's interesting to see like just a couple people on the ship start to like fall into like it's all it's power and like how great it is much like you know like ancient societies used to worship the sun you know as like a god yeah. in, in a way it is because it gives us life you know it's interesting to see like some commentary on that in this movie even though these yeah. people go fucking nuts <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. let's burn well, ourselves this, a lot right. i find it like hard to believe that you would be able i think where this movie starts to fall apart a little bit is like one on a spaceship that like has to survive for humanity to survive I don't think you should be allowed to manually change the tint of the sunroom right. to where it could literally burn you up. <laughs> right. Like, because yeah. on the Icarus or the one we're watching, he has to like get permission, like from oh. the computer. He has to say, like, can I watch it at 3%? She's like, no, that'll cause you like damage. And he's like, give me 2% or whatever. It's like, okay, like you shouldn't be able to like manually change that because. Well, no, because you might need to, if you're <laughs> facing like, if for whatever reason they need to face away from the sun before they get there, they can use that room to see shit that they can't see otherwise. Theoretically. Yeah. Like, they don't really have a camera on the front. I don't think. Yeah. That's the way they observe the 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 sun, the thing that they're heading towards. So. Yeah, I guess also to like convince a whole spaceship of scientists that like that you should burn yourselves alive is is a little hard to swallow as well, especially when you know like all your family. Well, I thought die. about like that. so. Yeah, I thought about that, and <clears throat> not, so kind of jump ahead a little bit, but one one the captain of the of the Icarus one survives, and he's the one that explodes the airlock. And he sneaks yeah. onto Icarus 2 to wreak havoc there. Now, he's burnt pretty crispy, but he's like <laughs> body horror burnt, yeah. Cenobite walking around, talking some god yeah. shit. Talking and some god I, it's, my, it's my understanding, or that, like my thought about that was, I was like, oh, wait, but he probably locked those people in there and then like opened the doors for them. Okay. Where they were huddled together with no no computers or some shit. Like he, he was clearly like, and even in the early videos, he's clearly fucked up. (laughs) He's clearly fucked up. And he's like, he does worshiping the sun and shit before that. So yeah, he loses his shit. That's what I took from that. And either way though, like you you could, it's not explicitly stated, but that's how I like, that makes more sense to me. I guess. That true. That does that does make sense. Because uh, that dude is definitely he's off his rocker. Pin and this backers, is where I think his name, right? Yeah, pin This is where they like go completely like horror. So like up yeah. until now, it's just like oh, they're just trying to survive. It's space, and it's pretty like grounded. Like it's it's you know like oh, we're floating through space. You got to breathe. Yeah, it's right gravity. It's like a good version of gravity for like the first forty five minutes to an hour. <laughs> yeah, and then all of a sudden there's this like insane like kill on the loose mm-hmm. that came from the space ca- uh, that the camera like, literally will not focus on won't do yeah. it which is kind of a bummer I wish <laughs> they showed you yeah more. I I took that note really? that even the editing that they do even when they go on the ship now I thought they might be trying to do a little bit of like event horizon mixed with like the exorcist or something but they yeah. do these like quick flashes yeah. of like pictures of yeah. like the, the old crew. crew that burn themselves. Yeah. And yeah. then also of like the captain kind of burn up. They do this. Some it's like so one. quick. And I was like, I don't like it's as frequently as they did it. I didn't like it. Like I was well, like, okay, I, I maybe like, once or twice, but I, I didn't like how long they did. Like, it seems like, like when you see Pazuzu or something in the exorcist, it's hidden. Yeah. Maybe it's the, the difference is that it was hidden in the dark. And when they yeah. showed these people's faces, it was like just a really blown out picture. Whenever the the flashlight was yeah, flashing, like the they camera lens or something, it. <laughs> yeah. And it just like, to me, it looks more like it's like more obvious, and therefore more like, well, okay, <laughs> like like Pazuzu, you kind of like, did I even see that, or am yeah. I sure that yeah. I saw that? But this this was, like it was pretty those, obvious. Those are happy people with like laser on their necks. What's going on? 
What's happening? Yeah, you can yeah. actually. And they do it, it like out. a lot. <laughs> yeah, they like do. they do it like yeah. too many times. So I wasn't about that editing style. It's a little jarring. Um, it wasn't my. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. my favorite thing, but I didn't hate it either. I don't say it didn't. Mm. It didn't detract from me. Yeah, it was kind of weird coming from like what we had seen before too, where everything seemed pretty like grounded and like normal as far as like even filmmaking <laughs> and CGI goes. And then all of a sudden, it's like now this is a horror movie. See, we're flashing images in your face. I was like, okay, like maybe tone it down a scope. Well, Seven had just come <laughs> out like seven years before this, so yeah, they had to keep um, going with that. So then, yeah, it's horror, and um, and like at this point, so like we've lost a couple people, um, and that's good for them because they're like, oh, we don't, like we lost a lot of oxygen. Only like four people can survive to the point of where we need to deliver the bomb, and so they lose the doctor, and then they also lose the guy who does communications, who's now the new captain. Uh, because he yeah. um, flies away in space. When he has a little Jeremiah Sand moment there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has a, he has little a moment. moment. <laughs> um, Harvey, whole Harvey. Harvey. Uh, I saw a little trivia about that. I don't know if you're going to Me too, it. man. We yeah, sure okay, are. Okay. We sure are. <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> it might be important for our cooter discussion. Um, it might be. <laughs> And so, okay, so Harvey's gone, the doctor's gone, and then Trey kills himself ultimately. So they were gonna, they do another like moment where they're like, okay, we have to make decisions, and they do a vote, um, and they vote to kill Trey. Well, they think, but Trey already like commits suicide. They think Trey is the one that sabotaged the airlock, like right. when the Icarus one and two are because he's suicidal. Yeah, and yeah. It just randomly detaches and fucks up. They think he did it because they don't know about the captain of Icarus run being alive and half burnt Christmas. Right. Who really did it? So yeah. they go to kill Trey because they think he's like a traitor and they need to off somebody so they can still breathe long enough. Yeah, that's the other thing is like they have to make like this whole moral thing about. This whole discussion yeah. again about like, yeah. well, we're not going to be able to make it with this many people on board. So somebody's got to get the knife. Yes. The greater <laughs> good, yeah. you know, we gotta, and, we gotta do. Yeah, what's which right, in this case, it wrong. actually kind of is the right thing to do in some capacity. Kind of. Uh, but he's already dead. This, this is the one. This is the one time too I mean, where God, Kappa, really. yeah. Kappa, and Mace are actually like. Yeah. in tune because at, yeah. like Singing Cap is just like yeah fuck it only kill. Rose Byrne is like no I don't I'm not gonna say do that but then she's yeah. just totally he's gonna let it happen so like yeah, yeah. well there's Can't no stopping it, Mace cause he'll beat ass he sure will <laughs> beat some ass Rob he's just trying to you know be alpha male somebody's gotta make the decisions Bob you know <laughs> and might as well be Captain fucking America baby yeah. everybody else and he takes the responsibility he's gonna kill him you know he's not putting it on anybody and, uh, else's shoulders Bob. in this movie he's Captain fucking leader. planet he's saving the whole planet in this movie <laughs> yeah, <my> really. <laughs> that's the thing is like when you get the like when <laughs> this is one of those rare movies where like the stakes are sh- like 100% like you couldn't have more yeah. stakes Right. Than what's at stake right now. All the stakes. For ev- every T- person that has ever lived could be wiped out unless you succeed. Like, yeah, yeah. like when, when, you know, you got to go to the question of are the means worth the ends, which is Machiavellian. Yeah. But it's literally acceptable to some yeah. extent to do a lot of horrible shit. Yeah. yeah. It's at fucked this point, up. Yeah. It's the end of fucking everything. So you can yeah. do what you got to do, I guess. So when Captain America goes to get, he's going to take a scalpel to kill Trey and there's several scalpels missing. I don't know if you guys picked yeah, up I saw on that it. too. So, um, it kind of gives like the foreshadowing of, Hey, there's uh, somebody else on board with a scalpel other than you and Trey who's killed himself. Um, and so I like how they reveal it. So, like, everybody just kind of disperses after Trey's dead, like, they're dealing with their shit, and, um, and old Kappa, he's just, like, working, and the, um, computer comes on, it's like, hey, you're dying, Kappa, and he's like, yeah, I know, he's like, yeah, we'll make, what is? he's like, we'll, he's like, we'll make it, like, to deliver the package, and the computer's like, no, you won't, like, y'all are gonna run out of oxygen, and he's like, no, there's four people, and she's like, no, there's five people, and she's, he's like, he no, gong, fucking gong. computer. Uh, yeah. gong, gong. And then it turns gong, out. Gong. Now, here's the thing that's kind of dumb, though. Okay, tell me what's dumb. So the computer <laughs> tells him, the computer tells him, like, mm-hmm. hey, there's five people online. And she's like, the fifth person is in the viewing room. So he's not even stalking around. He's in one place. Scarecrow, Kappa, he should have <laughs> been like, 
Uh, hey, everyone. Ev- hey, everyone. Yeah. There's somebody um, on the ship, maybe. Let's get and together. Even at, yeah, at any point, they have shown that they could talk to this computer. Yeah. Even once he finds out, like, oh, my God, this crazy guy's in the... He's like starts running away. It's like, hey, just be like, computer, call everyone, help! <laughs> like, <laughs> and he like gets him himself stuck in this airlock because this guy's ch- he cuts him with the scalpel. He like does this mm-hmm. whole like monologue or whatever. He cuts him with the scalpel, and then fucking guy Kappa just screws up so much in this movie that I just kind of like can't help but like side with Captain America a little bit. Um, a little he bit. Just like man, all you got to do is just like computer call everyone right now. Help! Help! <laughs> like, yeah, he he does. And, he um, misses an opportunity, and I don't know if maybe he just doesn't feel like he has the social capital after like being blamed for everything that's happened so far. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but then you can just what? be like, ask the fucking computer yourself, man. Don't listen to me. Yeah, because yeah. then. <laughs> Then yeah, he gets true. stuck in the airlock, so the guy locks him in the airlock, and then the crazy captain guy, he goes and kills the biologist chick. Yeah. Um, so he kills her, and he's kind of like hunting everybody else down, and he sabotages the computer so they can't like fly the ship anymore, or, whatever, or like the computer can't help them. And then he's like just hunting after them, and... Um, Captain America sacrificed himself, so he's trying to fix like the computer, put it back yeah. in the coolant. Yeah, and, he's um, he swimming just, like, in fucking coolant. Yeah, well, yeah. That well shit he gets his leg cool. caught too. That was a pretty cool scene. Nuts off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was rough. Um, and, like, and then you, like, there's a lot of soliloquies coming from Pinbacker throughout all this about God and shit, and like, like I don't know, man. Yeah. He says one of the first things we kind of hear from him is he says like, "We are dust, nothing more than dust." And to dust we return. And Stardust, when he yeah. chooses for us to die, it is not our place mm-hmm. to challenge God. So it's like God's so, will that the earth is ending and they should not change that. Right. And also like, th- like to whatever merit it, there is to it, he is still alive. He has taken the full brunt of the sun at this point, presumably he is a crispy fried motherfucker full of <laughs> yeah. some melanomas and shit. And based on like the weird camera th- shit, He's probably like nuclear or something is what they're trying to get off. Like that close to the sun. I wouldn't doubt it. Like that much. Yeah, that's radiation. true. Yeah. Like he could be like, like there's probably dozens of things that we, you know, on earth don't even think about could happen to him. He has like so, no skin, but he should <laughs> be obliterated kind of. like the other people. Yeah. And that's the, yeah. And it, if nothing else, I took a note. I was like, okay, this guy, it's, it's gotten so burned that his like skin is like, can be peeled off if he has any skin. Cause they don't focus mm-hmm. on him. It's like this dude definitely, if nothing else, should be blind. <laughs> like, how is yeah. this dude like? And that's the thing see. is like whether or not it's like miraculous or whatever we want to put context. You put yeah, it. Yeah, this, this movie doesn't true. really explain it. And like, I I don't know if maybe it's giving the impression like, okay, well if you've lived some, through some crazy shit that you shouldn't have lived through, yeah, w- what are you gonna do? Like, is your brain gonna be broken because all your friends are dead? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, probably. Um, yeah. <laughs> but also, like, if he killed all his friends or whatever, then maybe he hasn't actually taken the full brunt at that point, but has just slowly cooked himself yeah. the way that maybe the he got doctor like was going. Seven percent. He killed yeah. them. You know. But yeah, yeah, maybe he's yeah. I don't know. It's impossible for us to to say that. <laughs> like, yeah, which is just another. Yeah. It's just another thing to ponder on. And it's like, he's a fucking interesting villain because he kind of spends a little bit of time being like Shakespearean, and then half the time being fucking Jason X. <laughs> it's really <laughs> like he stabs a motherfucker through the back, like this lady through the, the biologist through the back with a vibrating fucking knife, which I don't know what the utility of that is, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) It's a vibrator with a serrated edge. Um, (laughs) Multi-purpose tool. Uh, I like it. Yeah. But Uh, yeah, and then he's like slashing it, um, Kappa and everything. Like he's, it's toes this perfect horror line. It's great. Yeah. The, so at this point in the movie, this is sort of like the, the climax here. Um, so Cillian Murphy is alive. Uh, Cassie is alive and they're being like chased down by pinbacker and they sort of, they actually climb into the, the bomb payload and it, they disconnect from the ship and they're like riding the bomb into the sun basically. And they're so close to the sun at this point that like time and space are like stretching and melding and like the camera does some pretty wild effects and like it's hard to really yeah. get your bearing straight yeah. and like 
you know, up, down, left, right. Like what the fuck is well, it has its own gravity. <laughs> like yeah. it's, that's what's like, they don't play tell you a lot about the ship's gravity, but this payload has its own gravity because cap has pushed off one edge and then slowly comes to rest as if that edge was lateral. Like or it was yeah. a rising yeah. line. Like it's, it's disorienting and weird. Yeah, it's the size of Manhattan. So yeah. I guess it has yeah. its own. And the, but kind of cool dense. though too. Like, yeah, yeah no, I, I thought it was really like, I liked some of that editing. There's some editing I didn't like with the horror aspects, but I liked the space editing because yeah. even then, like they, like the way the bomb works is it like makes all these like little sparks or something. And so he's in it when it like goes off and then like, because space and time and they, they, he does like a monologue about this, like earlier in the movie where he talks about, like how space and time are going to like kind of stop or like change. And so Mm -hmm. like the bomb like kind of explodes, but he doesn't die and he like can see the sun Mm -hmm. and like, it's it's just this weird, like almost like what's that movie with um, McConaughey and he like goes into a black hole. That's interstellar. Interstellar, Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of like plays with those kind of things. It's like, Oh, what would like a black hole be like, or, or, you know, like gravity be like, um, so it's, it's pretty cool. Like, but it's like, it follows, he's always having this dream that he's like falling into the sun. Mm -hmm. So they kind of like play on that, but it, it ends with it working. I think like, the bomb, yeah, like, that's the implication because that way. yeah, they show Sydney where it's all snowy as it should not be, and yeah. um, then they just show the sun like brighten itself up. Yeah, all of a sudden, so, which is what he said would happen essentially earlier yeah, on. So yeah. they did it. Good yeah. job. Yeah, he like reaches out and touches the sun or God. Faith. Yeah, <laughs> he touches yeah. faith. Yeah, yeah, it's a <laughs> interesting way to end the movie, and it's like I don't know that they totally nailed those editing tricks they're trying to pull off, but also like how the hell do you accurately represent like time and space, like stretching and bending and warping? Like, yeah, I, and it's then hard yeah, to pull exactly. Off, you know, um, and it's it's all like the, like they took swings, you know, they took yeah. swings, and most of them were were at least triples. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the camera yeah. work in this is mostly mostly a great fucking movie it's just got a few things that are a little underbaked that's it yeah i would say yeah i feel like they really missed an opportunity to close this movie out with walking on the sun by smash mouth i, don't, oh, I felt yeah. like that was might pretty- as well be <laughs> oh do you so don't be, delay <laughs> act now do you be this running song out. right here might as well be walking on the oh, sun yeah. We can't hear that. Oh, I have it queued up, baby. Oh, man. No I'm so, I can't wait for another copyright claim on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like they should have at least had like Chris Evans like working on something or something, have it walking on the sun. The ending is more like fucking uh, National Lampoon's uh, uh, Animal House or something. Let's <laughs> just go through. Kappa survived the fall. The, <laughs> so no, don't delay. Act now. No. <laughs> <laughs> smash fucking mouth that was their first big smash hit smash fucking mouth <laughs> oh, <damn>. uh, <laughs> best uh, band of a generation randy that's I, I found a spotify playlist and posted it in our slack that's called uh oh, white people grocery store jams and i think that song belongs on this, on this playlist. probably yes that is accurate <laughs> i appreciate a lot of those tunes so <laughs> it, is, it is what it I is. Know, it's, yeah. Um, anything else you guys want to touch on uh, before we rate this movie? Silence. I just, I just want to touch on touch on the movie. That's all. Touch. Whoa. Me. All right. Let's rate this bad boy out of five. Randy, why don't you kick us off? How you feeling about Sunshine? I mean, we've made no secret that we, I think we're all going to give us a pretty favorable review unless there's some trolling about. We'll see. Um, <laughs> but uh, I will we say... take this seriously, Randy? I take it some seriously. We Two thirds of us do. I'm shaking yeah, my head some, now. Some of us have given a Bigfoot documentary that's 40 minutes, five stars as <laughs> well. well. You know, at least I'm that. gauging my... <laughs> at least I give my numbers based on what I think of the movie and not what uh, other people think of the movie. Uh, uh, <laughs> I see 
<laughs> so respectable. Mm-hmm. We're getting so I'm an <laughs> honorable man. <laughs> Petty bitches. <laughs> this is what happens after six Atlanta years. Right I'm six sick years of you of, bastards. Of <laughs> reviewing horror movies, you know, gotta spice it up a little. Oh, uh, you stole my man. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's go. A oh, man. I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm going to say 4.75. It's pretty close to perfect for me. And I remember liking this movie a lot the first time I saw it. And I was like, okay, well, this is the real test. Obviously it's been a few years. I've forgotten a lot of key details. Let's see how this looks now. And at the time it, I didn't remember that this was an Alex Garland movie. And then when his name popped, I was like, well, yeah, okay. No wonder I fucking love this movie. Cause I've loved every movie that he's had his hands on so far, as far I can, as far as I've seen. So, I mean, and Danny Boyle's a, obviously a very capable fucking director. So it was really great in, in pretty much every aspect, except for the few like sort of underbaked things like we talked about. And there was also a lot of things that were like cutting room floored and things like that. So there's like sort of, I wouldn't call yeah. them loose ends, but sort of like ski jumps where there used to be bridges where you just kind of have to like mentally like just get past it. Like, okay, it seems like there's a relationship between Cillian Murphy and Rose Byrne, but is there? I don't know. Like it's yeah. kind of hinted at, but not really. Is it just a... Uh, partnership I don't know like it and they don't really go into it because it's not important so I mean how can I really hold that too deeply against the movie didn't need that that subplot it just seems like it maybe had it at one point and it was excised from the movie um so yeah I mean I don't know what else to say it's a great fucking movie I definitely recommend it it's good to see a uh several actually enjoyable at least but in this case very good sci-fi horror movies because it's a great genre, but it's like, it's underutilized. It's not, it's not, they don't release sort of high end sci- sci-fi horror the way they release horror comedies or things like that. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't happen as much. So I, I'm just happy to see it really. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see what Alex Garland's up to now. What's he up to? What's he doing? <laughs> so what's what he you doing, doing Alex? <laughs> That's our new segment. What you doing, Alex? <laughs> cool. Um, Juice, how you feel out of five? Uh, I like this movie. Um, I think it's good. A couple things that we didn't talk about. Um, just the most of the CGI in this movie, like looks really good. The visuals that they do, um, are stunning. There was a Mercury where they fly by Mercury. Oh, that was great. Uh, yeah. That was really cool. And then just also them being in the room, like looking at the sun and it all just like looks wonderful to me like just really engaging um but i think where i'm gonna drop this movie down is i i appreciate what they're what they try to do with like going full horror into it because up until that guy shows up like it's just like survivor horror like you're trying to like survive in space which is scary but then like they go full force with like this guy stalking people and like stabbing them and stuff but I just feel like while I appreciate it, it's it's still like not super smooth. It's it's got some rough edges. Transition, you mean? Yeah, transition and just execution. So like going from like seeing these this amazing amazing like CGI where like, oh, you're looking at the sun and Mercury and stuff like this, to going to where like the captain's always represented as like super blurry and like just some of the choices they made. I wasn't a big fan of it felt like cheaper than the scenes that had come before it. Just the blurry captain and um, like just those long shots of like the, the other crew. It, it just didn't feel like a smooth transition to me. Um, it felt a little rocky. And then some things that just like they can't like really explain away. It's like, why is this guy so strong? Like at one point he like lifts cap up like by the throat with like one arm. It's like this dude has no skin. Like, why can he see? Like <laughs> just like things like that is like, eh, it's like doesn't really make Well, you're touching on there's there like <laughs> the things you could say to that have a we will cover a little bit in the trivia, but like it there's purposes for those things being the way that they are, being unanswered. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um and it's really I just, just about like the subtext of the story, which I can see your point though. Like if you take it from a hard sci-fi perspective, there's a lot of yeah. questions left, left unanswered, but well, I it's just kind think, of, it's kind of weird I, going, transitioning from a, a fully explained world to like to, to yeah. a T, 
do this That's world thing. where things are just kind of happening without explanation. It's a little tougher, I guess, of a transition. It is. It's way. just a ro- it's just rocky. It's it's hard to go like for more than an hour engaged in this scientific world to then just transition and be like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about this guy having no skin. Don't worry about him not being blind. It's like, okay, yeah, well, it's tough that's to turn strange. that off once you turn it on. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So, um, so ultimately though, I do really enjoy this movie and I definitely think people should check it out and I'm going to give it a four star. All right. <laughs> four stars from a write it down, Bob. Go ahead zero stars from Bob. Don't it's dictate. justified. Don't dictate Don't other troll. people's scores. Don't be Bob. such oh. a damn <laughs> troll. Uh, I'm I'm not too far off base from you guys. I seen this once prior. I really liked it uh, when I saw it. Um, I like I said, I really dig the idea of people like becoming obsessed with the uh, with the sun and like worshiping it like um, like it's a god and and just like wanting to be nearer to it and wanting to like fully experiencing it. Um, I think that's just like an interesting concept, expe- especially like considering, Man, considering you would like, love ancient Egypt and shit, <laughs> right? What are they doing? They're like cats too. I like cats. What are they There's, doing? It's, um, I gotta get me some of that. <laughs> so, some of them pyramids. I wonder how much they cost. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting like concept and I like that they play around with that especially like when the sun is dying earth is going to die with it so we, we're very you know dependent on it um, the the people are like relatively uh, fleshed out on this on the ship like you get to know everybody's role and it's very believable and like I said the science seems like uh, relatively believable whether it is or not I don't know but you, you buy into it they, they explain it more than they probably even need to um so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm with you, uh, Justin, in the fact that like the, the first half where it's really just like these, uh, these astronauts trying to do, uh, pull off this like really difficult mission to save the world is like, it's pretty much all there. But then you get to like this, uh, event horizon, like Hellraiser, uh, type situation where you've got this skinless man running around slashing people to death. <laughs> And I, I wish they would have leaned more into the Hellraiser. Like, give me like thirty five percent more Hellraiser. Yeah. You know, like, and yeah. they would have, they would have been there. But maybe like the makeup design was like lacking, and they're like, we can't fucking show that. <laughs> or the movie's done. You know, maybe it was like that's one possible. Of those. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, eh, yeah, it's possible. Though. Um, so I don't know. They spent a lot of money on effects in this movie already. Maybe yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe they couldn't really swing like decent skinless man effects, but it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Maybe not showing that actually benefited the movie, but I wish they they had and like really leaned in, into the the horror of it because that is truly terrifying. This fucking skinless dude running after you with like a scalpel in the middle of space, yeah. and you're trying to save humanity, and shit's going to shit. It's pretty scary. I don't know. Um, uh, I like the design of the, uh, the like the gold spacesuits too. We didn't really talk about that. Oh much. yeah, Those loved like, it really cool looking that that was like 60s throwback future retro oh, yeah. shit i love that yeah that and it made cool. perfect sense. like it even made a logical sense it's a reflective material and it's got like the thin little visor and things like i mean yeah. it's utilitarian for this this particular case they have a justification for it looking fucking awesome <laughs> very retro yeah and um i already mentioned like the the time and space like bending is like a really cool concept which is difficult to show and i think they did probably the best they could it it looked a little ch- cheesy i think but you know still got the point across which is it's interpretative important. it's interpretive you can only yeah. you can only do it. abstract it <laughs> right yeah it's you can only do what you can do um but so yeah i overall i very much enjoy the movie um i'm going to i'm going to come in with a 3.5 on this one, which it's going to put our aggregate at a 4.1. So there we are. Sunshine. We did it. All right. We did it. We did I'm it. I'm shocked that you I didn't think put it is... in the four range, but yeah, you troll. Yeah, well, there's also like, there's something, <laughs> oh God, there's something that's sort of intangible that it's hard. For, I don't know why, but like after I watched this movie, I was like, that's solid. And like, I don't have a ton of complaints, yeah. but it doesn't like fully resonate with me. It's one of those. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't really know why. Yeah. Um, maybe it's, it's the subtext whether or not that's hitting for you or whatever but we'll get into that a little bit <laughs> alright alright um, well let's go ahead and jump into our Rotten Tomatoes segment real quick and uh, see what the critics and users think about Sunshine certified fresh to death alright take we, it away oh sure um, so we are going to now as we often do always do uh, 
try to I'm going to try to have these two guys guess what the critics score and the audience score are for this movie on RottenTomatoes.com. So let's uh, just put your best percentages out there for the critic score. Um, what do you guys think the critics gave this movie? Let's start with Juice. Does it have a critic count? Like how many people? Yes, I'm are sorry. I always forget that. The total count is 169 for. Ooh, okay. Ooh. That's a solid sample size. It's a little older. 169. Ooh, mm. a little bump there. Um, okay. <laughs> kind I, of the comedy I, number. <laughs> I, um, I think this would be favorable to critics. Um, I think they would like it. It, it's well written and well acted. Got some big name actors in it. Now this was before Captain America, so Chris Evans wasn't right. hot shit yet. But well, um, Sc- Scarecrow was though. Um, he wasn't hot shit, but he was the Human Torch technically. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. I forgot about that. Wow, damn. Yeah, you and everybody else. <laughs> and Chris um, Evans is thanking the Lord. Yeah. Um, I will give this seventy five. 75. All right, Bob, what do you think? Um I'll I'll just go full comedy number 69, please. Well, you you came pretty close, Bob, but Juice is going to pull it out off by 1%. 76% certified. Pulling it out, Fresh baby. Always pulling it out. <laughs> I'm always pulling out, baby. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to explore that comment. Um, so, so yeah, you got that one. Just one off. Seventy six percent is pretty good. That's a it's a solid C, um, which is less off. than I would All give right. it, but at least it's favorable for a, for a sci fi movie with the <laughs> the poster like this one has. It'd be pretty. It's got a pretty bad poster. This movie. Oh no, that's unfortunate. It's not terrible, but it's not great. It's very two thousand seven. <laughs> um, it's it's Chrissy Orlando. So let's go with the audience, their user score, rather. We're going to look at the user score. There are 168,000 plus users. Whoa, scores. Right. So that's quite a bit. You guys take your best stab at it. Rob, why don't you start us out this time? Um, I don't know. It might be a little bit higher. Maybe. Hard to tell. That's a shitload of votes, man. That's a lot of people. Yep. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to get a little crazy. I don't know. Let's say like 82%. 82 percent all right juice what do you think a2 i think the the audience might be lower on this actually oh. so i'm gonna go 65 <sighs> gotta do math now you bastard quick math uh deep, 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 okay deep, deep, deep. juice you're gonna take it again Deal. the number here you're looking for is 73 slightly lower 73. than the the critic score three points lower Boom, so you nailed it but uh i'm back <laughs> okay. i'm so back dishes. so yeah the audience <laughs> the score is, is like yeah, the, the audience liked it about the same but not quite <laughs> the critics consensus is danny boyle continues his descent into mind-twisting sci-fi madness taking us along for the ride sunshine fulfills the dual requisite necessary to become a classic sci-fi which is dazzling visuals with intelligent action okay all right Intelligent action. Duh. Yeah. I have intelligent. I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, I wouldn't put it up. Like it's definitely not as high as like an event horizon or an alien, but I mean, it's solid. It's, it's like, it's, I mean, it's, I put it top 10 for sure. Well, yeah, I I would definitely put it among those. Maybe not, maybe not alien, but that seems like a very different kind of movie to me for some reason, even though this movie definitely took cues from it. It's no Star Wars, okay? Let's just oh man, clear the oh air here. lord, dude! It's have you no guys Star seen Wars Phantom Menace? Part That's a good eight, movie. Whatever that one is, yeah. I still haven't seen the new one, and I couldn't be happier about it. <laughs> life without an opinion about Star Wars is a free life. I feel like I'm unshackled. <laughs> Way to be free, Randy. Yeah. Um, Way to fight the man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you gonna fight Disney? Jesus Christ, the Rat yeah. Man. No. All right, so that's about it <laughs> cool. for the Rotten Tomatoes. I could uh, maybe spread a little trivia joy, though, if you guys are yeah. up for that. Ooh, Let's do some sprinkle trivia. it on me. It's totally time for trivia. There's actually quite a bit here. Um, I've tried to trim it down, but there's a lot of interesting stuff. So I'm going to go through it. Um, and if I just start to run a little long, you guys just let me know, and I'll jump to the most interesting one. Um, so first of all, this is like, this is... This movie was heavily uh, influenced by scientists, specifically a guy named um, 
<laughs> Brian Cox, weirdly enough, who I love as an actor, even better physicist or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was <laughs> Brian Cox. was a leading physicist. Uh, he, uh, he, they invited people like Cillian Murphy and all the other actors to stay in the CERN facilities. You guys know CERN? No. Okay. Some science bullshit. Yeah, it's I'm science sure. bullshit. Just <laughs> leave it at that. Lame. In Switzerland. And they learned to copy <laughs> physicists' mannerisms. Murphy ended up copying some of Cox's personal idiosyncrasies, such as frequent hand movements. The actor also studied uh, mm. Henri Georges Clouseau's classic The Wages of Fear, 1953 film uh, to have an understanding of the type of suspense that Danny Boyle was attempting to create. Murphy has claimed that his involvement in Sunshine converted him from agnosticism to atheism. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's going to come up again. <laughs> I don't know if that's a huge uh, leap. <laughs> it's, right. it's a weird entry well, into IMDb's trivia yeah. section. It kind of uh-huh. encompasses quite a few things. But um, yeah. So here's some more science-y information for the hard sci-fi and all of us. Um, the plot does not revol- the plot does not revolve around the sun dying in the normal sense. This is not due for around five billion years, based on our understanding of nuclear fusion. It has instead been quote infected with a quote Q ball, a like the letter Q, mm. a supersymmetric nucleus left over from the Big Bang that is disrupting the normal matter. Um, this is a theoretical particle that scientists at CERN are currently trying to confirm and was one of the many contributions of the science advisor. The film's bomb is meant to blast the cue ball to its constituent parts, which will then naturally decay, allowing the sun to return to normal. Yeah. Now, I followed about three quarters of that. <laughs> I think it's like intriguing that it's like possibly real. Like it's they're like, yeah. oh, it's theoretical. I mean, but like the idea because I think we take like for granted, like oh, the sun will be around for billions of years. But if there mm-hmm. was like some particle there was that could like eat it? it up or some yeah. shit, yeah, they were like, oh shit. Who's that's to say our real. sun out of the millions of stars is the one that's that's gonna have yeah. be healthy until the day it dies of old age? Who knows? Um, um there's also some like there's some sci-fi leaps in this movie too. Obviously, um, Danny Boyle, however, found that working on a sci-fi project was so exhausting that he have vowed never to make another one again, which is a <laughs> significant bummer. Oh. I think we would all kind of like to see another, uh, yeah, hard sci-fi by the man here. He did a pretty damn good job. It must have been like I uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe he took like an Eggers like kind of take on it though, where it's like the science needs to be solid or something. Or I don't. I be, wonder, I mean, like, well, they definitely really did, their they did their research. They did their research, and then later on in here, I'm, I don't think I can find it right here. But um, they also, in an f- attempt to sort of keep everything really cohesive visual effects wise, they used one specific visual effects house, whereas they would have normally farmed it out to multiple uh, to make it okay. quicker. So it took a year of post production to make this movie. Damn. Oh. Because Holy all shit. that shit was done by the same uh, graphics house. So, <clears throat> let's see. Bob, to your point about the fucking spacesuits, the distinctive golden color in the spacesuits was intended to make them memorable to sci-fi fans. The character Kenny from South Park was used as a design <laughs> reference for the ah. funnel-shaped helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a That's small funny. number of suits and helmets were built as wearable costumes so the actors could experience the claustrophobia and react appropriately. So, yeah, people are really putting these fucking things on. I can imagine being pretty fucking freaked out in one of those things. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm getting a little claustrophobic for sure. Yeah, it's got such a tiny little slit. I know. And like the thing. And also, they show like at one point, he's like the air is gone and he's got to walk through like the spaceship with it. And it just like seems he falls down so and he's like, shit. Like, yeah. like it's really I'm running hard for just, my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, this is interesting as fuck. Actual sounds received from space that were captured by a Midwestern university were incorporated into the sound design of this movie. So there's actual space junk sounds or space sounds in this movie. I don't know which bits. It doesn't go into that detail, but somewhere somebody knows. And I want to know more. That's just nuts that there's like a ton of sound rolling yeah, I know. space. I mean, it's not a ton. It's very much not a ton. Just a lot of Led <laughs> Zeppelin a out ton. There flying around. <laughs> um, so... You know, I'm just going to go ahead and drop this big one that you referenced earlier, Juice. Drop a big one. So, in 20... Here we go. We're dropping the big one. Appropriate. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2018, when promoting his film Annihilation, Alex Garland revealed that the character of Harvey was actually named after Harvey Weinstein, 
due to his often <laughs> rude and snappy attitude to the other crew members and arrogant superiority complex. <laughs> Danny Boyle thought it'd be funny to pay homage to Weinstein in this way after Harvey had been difficult with the handling of a U.S. release of Train Spotting in '96 and tried to cut some of the more disturbing scenes. So a little bit of a fuck you to Harvey Weinstein, not for all his crimes, but for a few. Yeah. Um, and that'll help us roll into a cooter talk soon. Yeah, we'll we'll get back to that in conversation shortly. Um, like I said earlier, this cast, like the cast really went through a bunch of shit for this movie. They actually underwent space training and learned how to scuba dive. And they also, That's nuts. yeah, I know. They also took the cast on a four, a tour, excuse me, of a nuclear submarine to help them better understand cramped living conditions. He also had them experience weightlessness in the zero G environment of an acrobatic plane. So this movie had money and they did Jeez. their work on the front end. And the back end, like that's like I can see why Boyle would be exhausted after going through all this. Like this is, yeah. he went the extra mile in pretty much every back end capacity I can think of. You know what I'm talking about? Um, <laughs> oh, all the no. back ends, all the back ends. Um, 750 visual effects in this movie. Um, when Rose, Rose Byrne first saw the script, she assumed it was a romantic comedy based on its title. <laughs> I actually watched Eternal Sunshine in the Spotless Mind. I didn't realize we were covering. It's weird oh, how the plots no. are identical. I never. I watched that. Yeah, the Sunshine, like the and it's you know it's a pretty good horror movie. <laughs> um, uh, um, <laughs> Cillian Murphy and Rose Byrne also worked alongside Danny Boyle and Alex Garland in Twenty Eight D- Days Later and Twenty Eight Weeks Later, respectively. Ah, um, uh, yes. I always uh, forget he's in that for some reason. <laughs> Remember, he, he, what now Silly I Murphy? Will. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, oh Silly Murphy, he's the main guy. <laughs> I know. I, I just kind of forgot. I always just think he's the scarecrow. That dude's got scary eyes. That dude's eyes are. Yeah, he's freaky. he's got red eye. He's got sh- red eye. Watch, they're sh- like really blue. <laughs> well, it's like he was in a movie called blue. Red Eye. Yeah, it's a, oh. it's a Wes Craven movie. <laughs> he's got red yeah. eye. Um, in the original screenplay, the Icarus payload was the same size. It was made of highly compressed dark matter. There was no mention of needing fissile material and had the same mass as the moon. So it had its own gravity, but one sixth of Earth's normal. The science advisor pointed out the problems with using a bomb that massive. So it was reduced to the mass of Manhattan. A take with the original line can be seen on the DVD in a deleted scene. So really important. Be the biggest fucking shit. bomb. Holy shit. The size of Manhattan. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, the size of the moon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> bomb like, the just, size I'm, of the moon. That's what I'm saying. It's like just the size of Manhattan is so fucking. Yeah, big. I know. That's um, no moon. Oh, oh God. Bob. So everybody fucking face palm now. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the papers pinned to the walls of Kappa's bunk are actually scientific notes of Brian Cox, who acted as science advisor of the film. He, this Hey-o. guy was involved in a lot of ways. Um, let's see. Oh, this movie was the inspiration for a Lincoln Park music video for the song Leave Out All the Rest, which was released one year later. Oh. Due to the there same, you go. You they use the same concept and imagery for, of the, used in the movie. Is there a burnt up I skinless it. man it's, running around? I don't remember saying that. <laughs> I wasn't paying full attention, though, so maybe. That'd be nuts. Um, but they are flying into the sun and and screaming whiny things um oh <laughs> rip rip chester though rip yeah, chester yeah that is sad pour one out all right um at around a minute and 20 second i'm sorry an hour and 20 minutes in for the scene with chris evans character mace is fixing the icarus to coolant heat to make his breath appear that it was cold evans was actually entering extremely cold water with each take his teeth that chattering sucks. are a real reaction damn man that really sucks chris the evans only was- thing about the coolant like i know he eventually freezes or whatever but they show the cool in like the first scene like he's got a wrench and he's like working on something he drops a wrench and he like reaches in to grab the wrench and like immediately it's like, Oh my God. And like has to like treat his hand mm-hmm. like, yeah. like one Cold second in the coolant. Yeah. And then so he's this really going like through swimming hell. in the coolant. Like, uh, like the way that they do it in the first, it'd be like, you'd probably be dead. Like in like 10 seconds, yeah. like dude, get <laughs> like some not gloves. like swimming and climbing out and swimming and climbing out. Like, God. why don't you have a glove? Uh-huh. Like what? Get a glove. What are you doing? This man a glove. glove. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> well, apparently, like he was originally going to just freeze to death, but uh, Boyle was so impressed with him that with Chris Evans that he decided to be like, okay, well, you'll also get trapped because you're not going down otherwise. 
You're just that fucking. Good. Yeah, I get, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he got his leg you. trapped and like. I'm impressed. You know yeah. what? Your he's character, all. It was like pretty gnarly better. though, because like his fingers were all like, oh, yeah. like jacked up. He froze shit. to the he did a good job yeah. floor. He did a great job. Yeah. Um. So this is interesting. So here's sort of a, like a longer one, but it has to do with the backstories of each of the characters that they were given to prepare for the role, but not necessarily things that were covered. So. Um, Gia Milanovic, I think, wrote uh, wrote in the character background stories, uh, such as Kappa had being obsessed with the Icarus mission ever since he was a kid and feeling like an outsider because because he is not an astronaut like the rest of the group. Cassie was an Air Force pilot before entering the space program. She was also pregnant and had an abortion in order to be able to participate in the mission. Corazon okay. felt more strongly about plants and the oxygen garden than her fellow cast crew members. Excuse me. In her final recorded message to her husband, she did not speak and instead simply looked lovingly at the camera for a full minute. Yeah. She also oh, also the only member of the group to never use the Earth Room. Harvey worked on the Icarus One mission as a junior engineer. Out of the whole group, he has scored the highest in all of the fitness tests. His only weakness is his dependence and attachment to his wife and the fear that he will never see her again. He struggles with this throughout the whole mission. Captain Canada You is, weak son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck your wife. Um, <laughs> Kaneda is a very protective of Kappa because he knows that he feels like an outsider. He is obsessed with Icarus One and what led to its downfall. Mace, Chris Evans, comes from a military family. Both his parents were pilots and grew up in military bases. He is very clear-headed, and when he attacked Kappa, it was the exception and not the rule. He has pride and is honest. Unfortunately, this comes across as rude or cold to those around him. Mace developed feelings for Cassie on the, on the Icarus 2 training camp, but stifled and ignored these feelings in order to focus on the mission. As a result, he dreams of her every night. Damn. Wait, who does? That's, that's Mace. That's fucking wet oh. dreams over Chris here. Evans. Mm-hmm. Chris Evans is dreams just, of he, Cassie that every explains night? Every, mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's got blue balls, and that's the issue, obviously. And it's not from the coolant. I didn't get... I didn't get any of that. I know. Well, they, they was this was just given to him. They didn't cover yeah. any. Like there was a lot of things. He, actually, this is kind of a, helps explain this more a little bit too. He, they originally did have plan to have a sex scene between Kappa and Cassie in the ship's oxygen garden. They eventually scrapped it because Danny Boyle felt that it was, the idea of sex and romance in space would be too ridiculous. So, <laughs> which I kind of appreciate that these guys, the stakes are so high for these guys. Like it makes yeah, perfect yeah. sense that they would just be like, don't have sex in my oxygen garden either. Come on. You got to yeah, bonk for that. I got to breathe that. Yeah. Breathe in your breathe sex. Stink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, why does it smell like brute body spray in here? Is somebody fucking the O2 garden again? Damn it. <laughs> I can yeah. taste it. God damn it. <laughs> Take well, a you shower. Have to, wasn't God. it, you son of a bitch? Eat some, eat less pineapple. <laughs> um, <laughs> damn. Um, the, damn. DVD, the DVD commentary is from director Danny Boyle and consultant Brian, Cl- Brian Cox, excuse me, conflict on whether Trey actually committed suicide as it first appears or whether Pinbacker killed Trey and made it look like a suicide. Oh, which yeah. Which is what okay. happened according yeah. to Boyle. Cox states that Benedict Wong felt his character had in fact committed suicide. When Mace opens the drawer, there are two scalpels missing, which could support either scenario. However, it seems very unlikely that the insane pinbacker would have the sufficient motive or patience to fake a choice, Trey's suicide, especially yeah, when, that's la- true. when the latter is seen trying to murder the rest of the crew as fast as he can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was in like the earth room where it was like peaceful. Mm. Yeah. Earth yeah. Room. Definitely yeah, made it seem like so. he committed suicide. Yeah, I kind of feel that way too. You want to hit us with uh, one more and then jump into some cooter talk? Oh boy. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh boy, there's so many though. Um, <laughs> Pick one, Ryan. I'm two. I'm gonna give you two. This one's short. Damn the it, sound Ray. of Icarus One's distress signal was again used in, in as an alien distress signal in the 2011 prequel of The Thing. Oh, cool. So there you go. There you go. Okay. Reused, which I haven't seen that yet. Um, and then Alex Garland wrote the film as a love letter to psychologically minded science fiction and as a film about atheism and meeting God. He and later Danny Boyle differed in their interpretation of this aspect of the film, but found that it did not affect the content of the movie. Garland remarks that they had reached, quote, the same two interpretations that could be made from the world around us. So you've got sort of like 
a believer in some sort of order and power and then a, a hard atheist who is Alex Garland yeah. who wrote this story. Huh. So like the I, thing about Cillian Murphy becoming an atheist, that makes a lot more sense when you think about what they were talking about when making this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And you know, the, the uh, character of pinbacker was meant to resonate as um, sort of a representative of like fundamentalist religion um, and how destructive it can be based on, this idea that we shouldn't have control. We don't have control. So why would we stand in the way of whatever is controlling the world or whatever? So yeah, it's kind of like a, it's a heavily atheistic movie and they actually removed some of that. They pulled some of that back as a result of Danny Boyle's like disagreement on that topic. It seems like I thought it was pretty fucking interesting. So that's part of the subtext that really kind of pushed me to more like the movie even more because it's like what it, what it had to say was largely getting lost in the really cool action and really great visuals. (laughs) But it's got something to say about religion, which is about the heaviest topic you can find. So I was interested. I was pretty interested in that. Yeah, that definitely dropped it for me because I don't like to mix politics in my film. Oh, I don't like <laughs> movies. With, I, won't, I won't have it. I won't have it. There's no room for it. There's. I just no want a movie about the sun without fucking <laughs> politics. I'm just going to go outside God. and literally stare at the sun for an hour and a half, and that's a better movie than Sunshine. Fuck this movie. Yeah. Fuck this movie. I do that every day anyway. <laughs> uh, Fuck this movie. Well, let's uh, every day. Let's go ahead and talk about Cooters. Cooter of the week. We're going. All right, hunting. we gotta talk Cooters. Cooter type. So we gotta pin down a one person. Well, we don't have to, but we're gonna look pin for down. one person in this film that fits the criteria of Cooter, which is they gotta hit three of the five points. The five points are manipulation, smug arrogance, sexual deviancy, patheticness, and overall attire. Okay? So, or look, general look, Mm -hmm. demeanor. Um, Aesthetically. Are they aesthetically the cooter? So, Mm. uh, big one for me, old Harvey. Old Harvey Weinstein rolling up in here. (laughs) Yeah, he's definitely got patheticness on lock um, by comparison to everybody else in this movie. Which, I mean, that backstory was like helpful in understanding that character a little bit. Drops it down, but without it in there, it's still like pretty cooter. (laughs) You know, like within the the text of the film, he's so he's yeah, his pathetic. We didn't really talk about (laughs) it, but his patheticness is like he. um, So he's the communication guy, but they like one of the first things they do is like lose communication, like and they're in in several ways. And one, they like go outside the communication zone and Mm -hmm. then the towers are like burn up. So literally this guy in his like profession is pretty useless now. Now, the only Mm -hmm. thing that he like has to ride on is that he's number two in command. And so like when the captain goes outside, he's like, all right, you know, if anything happens to me, of course, like you're in charge and he rides that hard. So like when the, when they only have one spacesuit left, and they're going to give it to Kappa because he like knows how to do the bomb and everybody else is chill with that except he yep. freaks out and he's like, no, Kappa, I'm taking the leadership. suit. And like, yeah, they need a captain. And it's like, uh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, within um, the, it sounds less scootery uh, when spoken right now, but like the, the within the context of the film, it's like yeah. very cowardly. Everybody else is like, yeah, I'm going to stay like fucking whatever that Searle, I think his name was the doctor. He just ends up being like, yeah, I'm going to stay behind and die. You know? Yeah. And I'm Chris Evans at least tries to find a way for them to live. But it's mm-hmm. so weird too, because even at this point, they know like the oxygen has been destroyed. So they really don't have a way to live anyways. Like everybody's right. going to die. Yep. So it's true. Like, like, well, they, like yeah. but he's too much of a, yeah, exactly. His, his life's already he's too forfeit. much of a coward. Yeah. He's too much of a coward to let his life go, which I mean, I mean, <laughs> that's yeah, about as good tough, of a thing to be a coward about as anybody, <laughs> but like, you, look, you took this mission. You took yeah. the mission. So, you take the mission. This is like the mission of all time. You can either go out a hero or you can go, go out, out with zero. everyone else. <laughs> like, you, know, a zero. you can either go um, out with everyone else or you can be a hero. That's it. I guess he's got like some smug arrogance too. Cause they're kind of like, well, yeah, like you're useless. And he's like, no, the, I think the plea of like the captain, like, 
I don't think it's so. like, no, I'm so important that this mission needs yeah. me to survive and not the bomb maker. It's like, mm, no, like the we smugness have no comes directly from Pinbacker. That's the only person in this movie that's smug. I would say really. Yeah. And it's, like, he's smug because arrogance. he's a, an insane fundamentalist who thinks that he's Mr. Smead and God's hook. Um, yeah. So like <laughs> Mr. Smead. Yeah, he's, <laughs> I don't know why that was the parallel, but that's what yeah. happens. <laughs> um, Digging deep. There's anyway, no real back. sexual deviance in this movie, surprisingly. Nobody's creeping. No, there's n- uh, nobody's no. creeping. And that's the other thing. It's like people are mostly level headed in this movie as fuck. And like the idea that they wouldn't have sex because there's so much riding on it. Yeah, I would feel kind of the same way as like, not me. I'm going to go here and make, of course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> God, you always man. pull You're it the out. One fucking in the garden. Right? <laughs> always um, pull it out. Um, I don't know. I think it was. I think those two things not being there really helped the movie like pass my 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 Turing test of character development. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's a real strong cooter. Maybe the sun's a bit of a cooter, right? Because it's like oh. it's pretty self important. <laughs> think a think lot it's, of itself. I mean, oh. the sm- no. the smugness <laughs> of manipulating people into worshiping it. It's kind of pathetic because it's dying. You know? You're a, like, see, <laughs> Rob is clearly in the Danny Boyle camp that the sun is a god. If you take the sun yeah. as a god, I am, then yeah, sure. I it's am a major not character in this movie. That camp. It's <laughs> you know? a character? Oh, yeah. All right. I think so. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I don't right. know. The same, way, like, the same way that like Baltimore is a character on the wire. It's a term <laughs> now, you could, <laughs> you could o- argue that the captain is manipulative if you think that he tr- if he like tricks the people into burning themselves alive. Yeah. See, which I also, it seems like he I did. Subscribe to, to me. That, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go happen. with no cooter on this one. I don't feel compelled to vote for anyone. Really. You don't feel compelled? No, I don't know. I mean, appearance... Uh-oh. Let's talk about let's talk about Pinbagger appearance. That's true. That guy has no skin, <laughs> and he's blurry as fuck. He's um, blurry as shit. He's a blurry man. <laughs> Technically, we don't know what the fuck he looks like. He's <laughs> bloody, blurry, bloody and blurry. Those are two pretty cootery aesthetics, I would say. Well, and the, then the blurriness is chosen smug by, as fuck by the editor or the camera operator. <laughs> So maybe when they're you, the cooter. I don't know. When you have no skin. Okay. I mean, I mean it's not the it's not the act of filming that that makes mm-hmm. it a cooter. <laughs> it's that the man can't be focused on because he's a demigod or whatever, or he's like nuclear as fuck. So yeah. he's a, his appearance, his deme- his uh, 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 smugness, and um, his uh, manipulation. Manipulation. That's three. I would go with him. No, he's not the highest good. ranking cooter of all time because he's not pathetic. Um, he can be what's, what's our fifth one? He is very self-important. Yeah, he's he is got very some self-important. Yeah. Arrogance. Rob doesn't want right. to do it because he believes the son's a god. Uh, That's why he's uh, just he doesn't want to go against uh, yeah. his. He doesn't want to be lumped in with the fundamentalist light pinbacker. <laughs> sun worshippers. Light pinbacker. All right, all right, all right. Reform sun worshipper here. Light. If he's got no skin, you think he's got no dong? <laughs> oh, I don't want to go that far. <laughs> I don't want to go. It's like one of those really. old seven, seven, 11 hot dogs. That's just been, <laughs> been on the roller for like Chill three out. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, no. like, it's like a really long California. Raisin. <laughs> Good Lord. It's like fucking I don't know, it's beef jerky. Oh, All right. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, all right. Pinbacker with <laughs> with his California raisin <laughs> dick, California oh. raisin cock. Band name. Oh shit! You can have it. Called it. <laughs> you can have Damn it. Damn it! We can't take it I out. No, I it. said you can have it. I, I uh. do not want it. <laughs> oh man! All right, I think that's gonna do it for Cooter Talk. We're going with Pinbacker. All right. Let's uh <laughs> let's jump over into a little bit of horror news. Extra, extra, read all about it. All righty. So we watched uh, a couple trailers this week. The first one uh, I want to talk about is about a movie called Mortal, uh, which is going to be Andre Overdahl's next picture. Um, you may remember him from Troll Hunter and uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, uh, which came out last year. He's already got another movie coming out later this year. Um, so this uh, this movie is starring uh, Nat Wolf, who was previously in Death Note, uh, which we did an episode on a little while ago. 
Um, but uh, it's all about uh, Nat Wolf's character. He's a young man. He's discovering that he has godlike powers based on ancient Norwegian mythology. Um, so this is a, a Norwegian film. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys, uh, how you feel about this trailer? I didn't know that's what it was about because it was not primarily in English. True. And the subtitles were <laughs> also not following. in English, which are not Yes, helpful. there was not a whole lot. Well, you could turn it on English subtitles, but it was auto-generated, oh. and it did. It was as good as any of our voicemail uh, yeah. and speech to <laughs> text. Yeah, it was... Um, I wasn't feeling it, particularly, like... Uh, I don't know. It looked like a it looked like a cheap like X Men film or something. That's what I thought. It reminded me of Brightburn. <laughs> like, yeah, like it looks like Chronicle didn't like, enthuse me either. You guys remember kind of like Chronicle? Yeah, I never yeah. did see Chronicle, but not as good because that one was like handy cam, so they could like get away with a lot more. But yeah, yeah, it had that kind of feel where like, oh, I have these powers, so I don't know what to do with them. I'm accidentally hurting people. It's like, ah, uh, I, I don't care about that. I yeah. don't care about that. I'm I'm not <laughs> super sure on it either, but I feel like it's I feel like I want to see a trailer that I can understand completely before I pass too hard of a judgment on it. Yeah, I wasn't really about it. Yeah, it it's looks like shooting lightning and shit. It looks like fucking storm. It looks okay. I didn't know it was about like Norwegian or Nordic like uh um folklore or whatever. So I'm assuming he's Yeah, Thor. I didn't realize is, is it that. a four story? Which which could be interesting because, like, he did the Troll Hunter, which, like, kind of dives into that, like, that yeah, mythology. Right. Which yeah. I, He's just doing a mythology film and then an American yeah. blockbuster. What if this dude ends up battling <laughs> trolls? That'd be cool. Oh, trolls uh, versus Thor. Uh, trolls the versus movie? lightning. <laughs> <laughs> lightning yeah. boy. Lightning boy. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it looks, it looks, oh. All right. Uh, yeah, it reminded me of Chronicle, which was was pretty cool. I'll give it a watch though, because I I've enjoyed his previous films. He yeah, also did, uh, I, I, the autopsy I, I did too. Kind of just makes me want to watch Troll Hunter. Troll Hunter <laughs> once, once more. Yeah. So we don't have a definitive release date uh, as of yet, but it's going to be dropping later this year. So keep your eyes open for keep Mortal. Keep open. them open. Um. What else we got? We're talking about... So this is interesting. Uh, Columbia Pictures. They're bringing back one of our favorite franchises of all time. The Anaconda franchise is coming Hell back. Hell yeah, Thank baby. God. <laughs> Thank the gods. Oh, Thank God, the sun. Dude. Praise Isn't be there, to the uh, sun. Like, there's only been what, three, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, I've only Anaconda, seen the first one. Anacondas and Anaconda <laughs> Curse of the Black Pearl or something. And they did a mashup <laughs> with the Lake Placid Anaconda franchises too. They did like Ooh, a crossover. I mean, I which, know it won a special effects Emmy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it did. Um, so yeah, they're coming <laughs> back with a new movie. Apparently it's going to be hitting the big screen, which sounds ridiculous, um, but that's happening. <laughs> Um, I mean, Crawl came out last year and people were digging on it. So true. Dude, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a little weird movies too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. The Meg and all that shit. I don't know. I th- feel like, uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it has the, like to, to bring back an older franchise in this particular, it, like that, that, that there hasn't been a whole lot of like retreads like that within like the Marine Kaiju level you know, yeah. shark infested or gator or whatever, those kind of creature features that are like swamp gators and shit. Like there's not a whole lot of like, you don't see mo- much beyond piranha and the, those remakes. Like there's, yeah. there's oh, yeah. they usually come at fresh. I feel like even Sharknado, like Sharknado also, was a fresh like, take on a dumb one, but it was, if anything, like I, it's weird. Like there's certain animals that they want, like want you to be scared of. Like, oh, it's a snake. And I guess, like, I don't have any like strong fears towards snakes. Now, if you made like arachnophobia like, again, like if they made arachnophobia with like better like effects, and like sure, I like spiders, fuck them. But like snakes, I don't know. I'm not like. How are they going like, to get I, a river to flow backwards again? <laughs> Do you guys remember I don't that? Know. Just like no, don't, don't go to the Amazon. <sighs> I there's guess. some they shoot there's some footage in Anaconda. I I hope I'm remembering this right. I'm pretty sure this is right. I think it's Anaconda where they have some footage of like their boat going down the river and then they show that same footage later and it's going the other way and the fucking <laughs> waterfall behind them is flowing upwards. Oh yes. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It's real good. <laughs> 
That is That's a real John quality Boyd movie. All right. This is uh yeah. So uh, Columbia Pictures is putting it out. It's going to be all new and uh, uh, all modern take on the classic Anaconda movie. It's being it's being written by Evan Doherty, who wrote Snow White and the Huntsman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Tomb Raider. Um, it's going to be a reimagining. Uh, it's that be doesn't a, sound good. It's going to be <laughs> a, a big budget, though. They actually name drop the Meg. It's going to be like. Oh no boy. So, and we all know how well that did nope. on every level. Um it uh the Meg So did China really is well gonna be heavily seas. involved then right. is what you're yeah, saying. That's what I'm so saying. it's a half American, half Chinese expedition to the Amazon, is what you're telling me. Could be. Maybe they'll bring like <laughs> Jackie Chan into it or something. He's like killing snakes. Kevin Hart's gonna be there. I mean I'm just moves. assuming Kevin Hart will be there oh, my for God. sure. Ah, that would There's be... going to be one guy who speaks Chinese really poorly and they're going to roll their eyes at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So, yeah, we'll see. We're what, calling it now. What the deal is with that. Um, last bit of news. We, we saw another trailer for a movie coming out called Vivarium, uh, which uh, stars Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots. And uh, this thing looks... <sighs> Kind of like an episode of Black Mirror or something. So, uh, so yeah. kind of, yeah. The uh, Twilight Zone or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Twilight or Pleasantville. Zone. They they like it's move like they move into like the this like new suburban neighborhood and it's like very very like uh, futuristic kind of looking. They're they, like forced to move in. They go look at a yeah, house. <laughs> yeah, and it's a very cookie cutter house. They try to leave and they can't, and then they like are forced to raise this baby, this infant. And then mm-hmm. they're like, then they get a note with it. says like, you know, raise this child and then we'll let you leave basically. So it is, mm-hmm. um, I don't know, man, it looks strange and I don't really know how to describe it or what to compare it to. I'm interested. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's got some commentary going on about like, uh, uh capitalism and like parenting oh. and, and whatnot. So I don't, I don't know. We'll see. All the on- yeah. The only, the only like very obvious subtext that I saw <laughs> was, um oh let's buy a house oh oh no we're caught in a trap and it's called the house oh and the house is now draining us of our life and now we have to raise (laughs) this thing oh no what happened to my life i don't get to do things anymore this is a movie about becoming uh, a suburban parent don't grow up don't start a family yeah that's right go out kicking sounds like true (laughs) whore to me yeah (laughs) Uh, He's never going to pin this juice down. <laughs> <laughs> this juice is too. Yeah, I actually These was really, run too I was red. really, I was, I was really intrigued. Like it had like the guy who was selling the house. It's like really creepy, but also like yeah. they couldn't escape and they showed that in the trailer. They try to like burn the house down and then like the baby shows up and like, they're just stuck in this neighborhood where there's like a seemingly like no one else except there's like a shit ton of houses. So I'm curious, like, do they explore the other houses? Like, yeah. What, what's the deal? I, I, I'm wondering how much of this movie we've actually seen because when the kids showed up, I, I thought that the whole movie was just going to be them trying to figure out their way out. Then a fucking kid shows up. Like, oh shit. Like there's going to be a whole substantial part of this movie. that are raising this kid. And like, yeah, what, cause then I'm he wondering turns if there's even like more. a six year old or something like that. Like yeah. he's a baby. Does he grow rapidly? Are they there for six years or like, like I'm wondering the if they like, like fuck up the neighborhood and like, it becomes like, I, I'm, I'm wondering like if there's major shifts that happen later on. Um, I hope so. I don't know. I feel it's like this, could, this is like either like the first two man? acts of this movie sure. or it's just the first act and there's a lot more to cover. Yeah. I got yeah. show vibes for sure. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. Sure. I was intrigued by it though. I'm curious. Yeah. It's dropping on a VOD platforms March 27th, 2020. So keep your eyes out for Vivarium. Vivarium. Um, yeah. The I'm, v. I'm most intrigued by <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots just being in a movie to- together because they're both pretty fantastic actors. So I'm into that. I'm into it. Uh, that's all we got for news. Uh, we don't have any... Uh, voicemails this week but if you're listening and you'd like to call in and leave us a voicemail to be played on next week's show you can hit us up at 904-638-3231 do you guys have any nobody told us that they would smash yeah that's that's what a shame (laughs) the uh, so we posed a question last week we were talking about life force oh justin posed a question we don't do it and uh, yeah, it doesn't Taking matter. Another bite at that apple. It doesn't matter. All right. I don't, do Do you guys have any any new questions to pose? Yeah. So uh, let's imagine that you are like these guys. I had this idea. 
you are like these people. You're going to your death and you're in space. There's just eight of you. You're out of communication. You may or may not. Would you smash? Would you smash? Oh my God. Wait, we smash? need more Would setup than that, Randy. We need I'm to sorry, know. I didn't like, ramble cut me on. off. You, you called my bluff. <laughs> <laughs> you Captain America's me. there. You're thinking he hard. might smash, but you want to beat him to the smash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you gotta competing with Captain, Captain America. America he's smash. in the bunk next to you, and you know what he's thinking. But there's he's thinking about that rose chair. burn, baby. He's kind of on the fence. You don't really know. <laughs> oh my god, the implication starts weighing in on this real soon. <laughs> you're not a real astronaut, but you made the bomb, so you're kind of respected. But Chris Evans, he's a real astronaut. We need about 20 <laughs> more minutes of summer synopsis of this movie before we can say, "Would you smash? Would you smash?" <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So no real questions, I'm assuming. I don't know. Yeah. Or would you go after the bomb or would you keep the course? Go after the bomb. Mm-hmm. Go after the second bomb. Yeah. Or keep the course. Yeah. 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 Solid moral yeah, quandary. Yeah. What would you do? Stay the course, yeah. veer off course to get that second bomb. What would you do? Let us know. Leave us a voicemail at 904-638-3231. Hotline scream. Um, that's going to do it for us this week here at straight chilling. We're going to be back next week with a brand new show. We're, we're still keeping the whole space theme alive into next week. This, keeping this, it alive. This whole year. Maybe. Just fucking getting spacey with it. Just speak. God, we're going to be digging spacey. some. Um, oh, oh, not no, really. Oh, no, we already right. covered. Horrific. Now that you've mentioned two predators now on the same Sorry. podcast, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I, we're under me? watch now. I, think I, take, I did one. You <laughs> did, Bob. You did this. <laughs> this is some You personally. <laughs> we're talking about a new release next week. It's going to be our first new release of 2020, actually. We're talking about a movie called Color Out of Space. Whoa! What? This up? was my number one on my most anticipated films this year. Nice. Can't so wait for it to disappoint you somehow. I know. Yeah, I might, I might be <laughs> going t- in Hollywood Bob style. You need to not go in so hot. Make <laughs> sure your beer is good. A good beer. You trust the beer. <laughs> Bob Burgers styles. Am I right? Uh, <laughs> you wish. Now yeah. we're getting sued by Fox. Great. Great. This is a this is a new guys uh, call me Bob Burger. Call me Bob Burger. Uh, this is the new Spectrovision <laughs> joint. Uh, it's starring Nick Cage. Color out of space. Uh, check oh, it out. Man. Get ready for next week's show. I'm excited to to see this thing. Been looking forward to it. I hope he goes genuinely, buck wild. I cannot remember a time that I was this excited to see a Nick Cage movie. I'll tell you that. Whoa, Randy, cool it down. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I got to cool it too. I'm <laughs> pretty interested. Hollywood, Randy. <laughs> they call me star fucker randy <laughs> randy g quaid um so that's gonna do it for us until next week please rate review and subscribe to us on itunes you can follow us on twitter at str8 underscore chilling on instagram at straight chilling podcast you can send us an email through our website straight chilling podcast.com if you want to join our slack channel let me know on one of those social media outlets and i'll send you a link so you can join in on the daily conversations. We talk about the movie of the week, TV shows, music, news, whatever we want. Uh, watch Justin play video games on Twitch. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for video game reviews and behind the scenes footage of us making this show. Vote in the bracket of blood. Check out our mini casts, our side show. Let's get physical media. We got a lot of stuff happening. Uh, take full advantage. Bob, of it. real quick. Yeah, what's since up? you mentioned it's the end of January, you've been doing Let's Get Physical Media. Uh-huh. Last year, we had you pinned at an average of twenty-two Blu-rays a month. Do you think you have surpassed that this month with your Let's Get? Physical Where did Bob go wrong? Were he in his friends? <laughs> Welcome to our newly unretired segment, How to Save Surpri- a Life. Surprise segment, Bob. Do you think you've Man. purchased more, of, more than your average of last year's 22 <laughs> Blu-rays a month? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, you gonna if you want the answer to this question, you got to listen to the next episode of Let's Get Physical Media, where we will discuss You're going to talk about Tom. Where did Bob go wrong? No. You cannot play that song again. You can't. What? Not. I'm sorry. I couldn't. Where did Bob go wrong? Were he and his friends? Oh, my God.
Can't. Cannot. Yeah. I won't allow this. Randy, you want to take the over under on this? So you think Bob hit oh, over twenty two for January? I'm thinking this under? reaction is pretty big for the situation. So I'm going over. Yeah. I'm going over. Yeah. I think Bob definitely went over. A dude, a dude gets gift cards. He spent all his Christmas money. <laughs> He's trying to impress uh, the new crowd at Let's Get Physical it, Media. He definitely <laughs> he's found he's found his his followers, and he thinks he's thinks he's unchecked. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where did Bob go wrong? There's no Bob, way I'm going to be def- able to go back in and recreate this, Randy. There's no possible. <laughs> I can't do it. I, you've done it too many times. I think you can. I can't I do it. I think you Bob, can. You- you definitely uh, have watched the Blade Trilogy, though, right? Oh, lordy, lordy. Tune in to the next <laughs> episode of Let's Get Physical Media. We'll talk about our pickups for the month of January. We'll see how many I bought. We'll talk all about it and get wild and crazy. Um, but that's going to do it for us. We'll leave you on that cliffhanger. Where did Bob all go right. wrong? Who knows? Um, until next week, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling. All right, let me cue up the music here. Where did Bob go wrong?